last week. Bobby, you surprised at that margin? Well, I, I think it was a great win for him, but Mike Gottfried felt very confident going into that game that he could play with Ohio State because he thought he had a better speed factor involved. But, uh, of course, the route of Ohio State, nobody expects that. It was a tremendous victory for the Pitt Panthers. It gives them a big lift, and you wonder what kind of perspective they'll look at this football game with. With so much on the line, so much as far as the rivalry is concerned, we had an opportunity to talk with both coaches, Mike Gottfried of Pittsburgh and Don Nealon of West Virginia, about the impact of this big game on their preparations for this week. Well, as young as we are, I think it doesn't have much effect. Last Friday, we came out before the Ohio State game, and we were very quiet. And on Saturday before the game, our players were really quiet, and I was concerned that they were too tight. Uh, but they went out and played very, very well. And I think that we talk a lot about big game atmosphere. Let's get in big games. Uh, that's why he came to Pitt. Let's get in them. And uh, so I think they're enjoying it. I really do. I don't think it's had an effect on them, and I don't think this one will have an effect on them and, and tighten them up at all. Well, you know, I kind of think that we have a pretty mature football team in West Virginia, and I think they really want to play. I, I detect a mood, hey, let's go up there and play. Uh, we have a great deal of respect for Pitt. We think they're a great football team. They may be as good as anybody in America. I don't know. Uh, they have that great blend of veterans and youth, and all of them are very talented. So our team knows they better play or they're probably going to get killed. Well, you know, they're very close, as Don Nealon said, just 75 miles down the road, and there are 37 players on the West Virginia roster from the state of Pennsylvania. So you know it means a lot to those two teams. Sure We've got, got a great rivalry getting set to set it up, and we'll also talk about the two offenses, so stay right with us after this word from your local station. Welcome back to Pitt Stadium in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Steve Martin here along with Bab Cassiola. This is the 81st meeting, the backyard brawl between the Pitt Panthers and West Virginia. You see Pittsburgh has the edge in this series. It began in 1898. They've been playing continuously since 1943. The last West Virginia win here in Pitt Stadium, 28 to 10. That was in 1984. You know West Virginia is going to be hungry for this game today. You sure are, and they've got a lot of players, including their quarterback, Major Harris, a hometown product who's coming home today. That What's, that's what really makes the rivalry so great. You better believe it. We take a look at the offenses of these two teams. You mentioned Major Harris. He is such a major part of what they do. No pun intended. Look what he did last week. Six out of 11, 150 yards and a touchdown. That doesn't tell you what he did on the ground. Here he runs the bootleg on the goal line from a wishbone, and nobody is near him as he takes it in. And that was a key score just before halftime. And here we see him doing a little play action again and hitting his tight end win in the end zone. And, of course, he can throw and the Pittsburgh game last year was a turning point for him. He also has some other weapons to go to. He's got some great running backs. Two of them you see here in Craig Taylor and A.B. Brown. A.B. Brown, and he has depth at the running back positions. They'll substitute two and three people there. All of them can run and catch the ball coming out of the backfield. And, you know, you talk about A.B. Brown. Here's a guy who is a transfer from Pittsburgh, so he has something at stake today. There you see the offensive comparison. West Virginia is uh, number one in scoring offense, number four in total offense, and Pitt can bring a lot to the table as well. They sure have very impressive numbers, but most impressive is the fact that they gain close to seven yards per play as they move the football. Very impressive offensive football teams. You know, one of the things the comparison is West Virginia has a veteran offensive unit. We talk about their fifth year seniors in the offensive line. Pittsburgh doing it pretty much with a very young team, especially at that quarterback spot. A combination of youth and experience in different positions, but great talent on both sides of the football. There's Darnell Dickerson. He's the reason why this will be his seventh start, technically, for the Pitt Panthers. 18 years old. That's all he is. He's a freshman, and he's an outstanding football player. And he loves to take the ball on the corner and just turn it up. It's a designed run all the way, and he's got the ability to put it in the end zone. Craig Hayward is gone a year early to the pros, but Adam Walker gives them a much different dimension to their offense. Very quick and elusive. Great cutback action. Three touchdowns against Ohio State. We see him here going in for one score. Five touchdowns already this year. And he has 327 yards total offense. There's West Virginia coming out on the field. They're 3-0 on the season. Their ninth season under Don Nealon, who's 3-5 against Pittsburgh. As you see the crowd of 56,500 getting set to watch this big battle between two great American independents. And there's Don Nealon as he crosses the far sideline. Boy, We're is he up for it. We're going to be set for the action. Here is Pitt right here. They are 2-0 in their third season under Mike Gottfried. Gottfried is a 9-5, and and there you see him from Kansas. The kickoff and more when we continue. Stay with us for Pittsburgh and West Virginia. 
Pittsburgh. Steve Martin here along with Bob Cassiola. Just about set for Pittsburgh and West Virginia. We've talked an awful lot about the offenses and the roles that they'll play today, but defense will play a key role today, and we've got a key defensive situation facing Pittsburgh this afternoon. Our sideline reporter Stan Saverin gives us the update. Steve, thank you very much. One of the major questions about this game was the physical condition of Pitt senior defensive end Burt Grossman. He injured an ankle last week against Ohio State. He did not practice all week. Would he play today or not? Well, our answer came about an hour ago when Pitt came out for their pregame warm-up. Burt Grossman was not dressed and will not play today. He did work out slightly last night and could play today if possible, but the coaches felt that they put him in. He might re-injure the ankle and be out for five or six weeks. So Pitt's best defensive lineman, Burt Grossman, will not play today. It's a key factor because with the rollout and scramble ability of Major Harris of West Virginia, Pitt's outside people are going to have to play containment. That would have been a responsibility that fell to Bert Grossman. As it is, Pitt starts two freshman outside linebackers without their senior defensive end. West Virginia is certainly looking to get outside with Bert Grossman out of the lineup. Back to you, Steve. Thank you very much, Stan. We'll be hearing from Stan throughout the afternoon. That's a key development as you look at the game conditions. A temperature 62. It's very comfortable to wind out of the Northeast. Forecast partly cloudy, but a key development for Pittsburgh. Well, it's going to be a real test as we look at Don Nalen right away for the Pitt defense because Grossman was rated by the NFL Pro Scouts as the highest rated defensive end in the country. So there is a big guy out of that lineup against an explosive West Virginia offense. And of course, one of the key factors today in a very close defensive battle, as we expect, is the kicking game. And Pittsburgh's made some changes there. They're going to go with a freshman kicker right now, Scott Kaplan from Coral Spring, Florida. He's going to do the kickoff chores. Jeff Van Horn will do the placement chores, but because the punting game has not gone well, Jeff Van Horn will also be the punter. There you see Scott Kaplan. Deep for receiving for West Virginia. Eugene Napoleon is about three yards deep in the end zone. Andre Johnson, one of the upbacks underneath him. And we're just about set to get it away with this battle between two great American independents. Pittsburgh in the blue to the left of your screen. And, of course, the West Virginia Mountaineers coming in here 11th ranked in the country. You add that national ranking to a great rival, and you've got yourself a ball game. We are underway. The kick is short. Coming up to take it, Napoleon at the 15. Napoleon dances to the outside. He's on the loose at the 45 and knocked out of bounds at the 46-yard line. Doug Hetzler and Cornell Holloway knock him out of bounds. A great return of 28 yards by Napoleon. Major Harris trots onto the field, and let's look at the return again. There's Napoleon, number 33. The junior from Jersey City, New Jersey, breaking it to the outside. A very short kick, and... West Virginia starts off in great field position. On setback is Craig Taylor. Now they move A.B. Brown in back of him out of the eye on first and 10 at the 42. Here is the re fake reverse. It's Harris out there on the corner. Harris, Hampton pulls him down after only a two-yard gain. So the reverse doesn't work, but let's take a look at that offense. Major Harris, A.B. Brown, he's, from, he's a transfer from Pittsburgh. Craig Taylor, the fullback. Reggie Rembert has been a big addition, a junior college player at the wideout position. He faked the reverse to him that time. A very experienced offensive line with size and experience. Fullback on the carry first time or second time through. That's going to be Craig Taylor. He fights some hard yards up over the 45 to about the 47-yard line. Mark Spindler in on the top as well as Carnell Smith. Let's look at the defensive line. And they're going to be tested, there, but they've got some players there. Mark Spindler, only 18 years old, started as a freshman defensive tackle. Of course, a very interesting linebacker core led by Jerry Olsowski. That's Wynn moving in motion. Here comes Harris on the option, caught in the backfield, pitches to the corner, but Cornell Holloway is there to diagnose it perfectly. And they nail A.B. Brown for a three-yard loss back to the 43. They were waiting for the option on third down and long yardage. Excellent pursuit. Everybody was covered. Mike Godfrey said, we can't stop Major Harris. We've got to stop all the parts. Somebody's responsible for Harris. Somebody has to be responsible for the fullback. And somebody responsible for the pitch. There's Harris taken. Watch the cornerback coming up on the outside. Holloway to make the play on the pitch man. Excellent defensive series for Pittsburgh. And the punt by Lance Carrion will go into the end zone. 
Tom Carrion is one of the nation's leaders in punting for West Virginia out of New Kensington, Pennsylvania. It's 57 yards. It goes into the end zone for a touchback, and Pitt will come out offensively and take the football at the 20-yard line. So a very good defensive series for the uh, Pitt Panthers, and here's Pitt's offense. Darnell Dickerson. Just a sophomore, elusive runner, excellent passer when he has to. And Adam Walker, the new tailback, five touchdowns already this year. Crossman, the fullback, Osborne, Toot, Kirk, those are the receivers. Osborne, a fine all-around athlete. And, of course, the offensive line, Tom Ricketts and Mark Stepnowski, they feel that those guys have definite pro potential. And he feels Stepnowski's the best offensive lineman in the country. Caliguire moving to the center position from guard. Walker and Crossman are in the eye behind Dickerson on first and ten. Here comes the handoff to Walker, and he's caught behind the line of scrimmage. A great play by West Virginia, nailed for a two-yard loss. Coming in on the tackle is going to be Chris Parker. Let's take a look at that West Virginia defensive front three, three good ones. Parker, Gray at the nose position, and Mike Fox at the other defensive tackle position. Turnbull had a great day against Maryland from the outside linebacker position. And, of course, Pickett, another fine linebacker. Our secondary, very experienced. Mays with an interception against Maryland last week. Orlando with an interception and a touchdown as well. Crossman and Redmond the setbacks now for Dickerson on second down. This is Darnell Dickerson to throw and pressure nearly intercepted by Chris Herring. He picked off a pass earlier this season and that is incomplete. Little play action pass that time trying to hit the back out of the backfield. As you watch number 15 Darnell Dickerson the sophomore quarterback little fake here. He's going to come to the left side of the screen but number 49 Chris Herring gets underneath the play and almost makes the interception there. Big play by the defense third and long for Darnell Dickerson and the Pitt Panthers. No score 12 31 left to go first period. Out of the uh, out of the split back and here is Dickerson Dickerson with a quarterback draw and that is not going far again Chris Parker who applied pressure on that last pass making the tap very interesting first two series two great offensive football teams and in the first two series both defensive teams have dominated play and of course last year we saw a game with only six uh, three field goals in essence Jeff Van Horn as you see here in to punt for the first time this season kicked two of them. This is a key part of the game. West Virginia will move 10 men in. Van Horn with a kick. Back to get it is Grantis Bell on the fly at the 38, and he steps out of bounds at the 39-yard line. Grantis Bell on a 43-yard kick, and that's the longest punt thus far this season for the Pitt offense, and Jeff Van Horn does the honors. No score with 11.55 left to go on the first period. We'll be back after this. Welcome back to Pitt Stadium. Steve Martin here along with Bob Cassiola. No score between West Virginia and Pittsburgh. Down on the sideline with a report. Here's Stan Saverin. Despite the 43-yard punt by Van Horn, Pitt has had all kinds of problems with their punting game, averaging only 27 yards per punt. They put an ad in the student newspaper, and one of the kids who answered it was James Finley, number six. He's a walk-on from England. He's a shot footer, knows nothing about the game of football. Probably will not punt this week. Here's the first play from scrimmage for West Virginia in their second possession. Carrying the football is going to be A.B. Brown, and there's not much yardage. Mark Spindler is the man who made a tackle, and he's a good one. Mark Spindler was one of the first, one of the few freshmen to start here at Pittsburgh. He started last year. He falls in line with a lot of great names, Dorsett, Hugh Green, Bill Fralick. Spindler is a 6'5", 270 player from Scranton, Pennsylvania, and he is a good one. Second down coming in about seven. Make it about eight. West Virginia and a fumble on the snap. Harris covers up. There's a flag on the play, and Smiter maybe jumped ahead of the count. Right side of the line, Brian Smiter, the big tackle, very fine pass pro, just moved before the snap. Here's a call by our official. Watch the top of the screen as you see number 79 set up just before the snap. A little tenseness in there now. This offense, a powerful offense for West Virginia. Pushed themselves back, and Major Harris, sitting, the ball sitting on the 35-yard line, and he's looking at a second down and 13. Taylor and Brown, the setbacks. Set up out of the eye originally on second down and a passing situation possibly. Here's Harris, and he's snared in the backfield. Fumbles the football, but West Virginia will recover, and a great play by Nelson Walker. 
Nelson Walker playing the sophomore, starting for Burt Grossman, the defensive end position. There he is, number 94. He just knifes in right away as they start a little counter option here. There's Spindler going one on one with. Uh, That's Milton Redwine. <laughs> Milton Redwine, the offensive lineman. But anyway, beautiful play by Walker, throws Major Harris for a loss, and now it's third and 19. No score in motion. Taylor, no setback. Here comes Harris to run. Not much room. Squirts out of two tackles and is brought down at the 32. Finally brought down on the play by now Nelson Walker. Nelson Walker, he's up for this one, boy. What an opportunity. Anyway, that time they came out. No backs in the backfield. Obvious passing down, obvious passing formation. They decided to run a quarterback draw, and there was Pitt ready to take him on. Again, they're forcing a punt. Number one in Division 1A net punting. Here is Carrion with a low kick that might have been tipped. And it's not going to be a very good one. It now takes a West Virginia bounce inside the 30 to the 28. Kicking away from Alonzo Hampton in that situation. And that's where Pittsburgh will set up after a 40-yard kick. Lance Carrion trots off the field. There's no score. 9.54 left to go in the first period of play. We'll be back after this from your local stations. Welcome back to Pitt Stadium on a beautiful September afternoon. The tension of a major battle between two top 20 teams add the fact that they're only 75 miles away from each other in the backyard brawl. This is their 81st meeting and Pitt comes out here with no score on their second possession and they'll start from the 28. Darnell Dickerson. There you see him at quarterback out of the eye formation moving across the formation as Osborne. Here is Walker and Walker runs head on right into the heart of that West Virginia defense and he gets very little yardage picking them up Mike Fox and Robert Pickett. That's a tough defense that West Virginia has. They're very very aggressive and they can fill the hole well. Watch Ellis the linebacker from the inside position as he comes in here and also number 45 Pickett come up into the hole There's Ellis 66 making the hit just fills in perfectly after the blocks on the down lineman. Very active group on defense. West Virginia is just experienced everywhere you look on this football team. Second down and about eight. Here's Darnell Dickerson to throw. Straight drop back. Has some time looking long. Has Crossman his fullback incomplete. Matching up with Willie Edwards down the sideline, the Pittsburgh sideline. Dickerson airs it out for his fullback. He really was looking upfield. He wanted to hit his end. Tootin, who was coming from the inside position, he was well covered as Bo Orlando, the strong safety, picked up on him. And he just went to the outlet pass. Uh, he went to his uh, outlet pass that time when he looked for his halfback. As we look at 43-year-old Mike Gottfried, head coach of Pittsburgh, very impressive stats already in his first, this is his third year as head coach at Pitt. No score, third down and eight now for Pitt at their own 29-yard line. Board in motion. Here's Dickerson. Will he keep? Yes, he has to. He has to keep that time because uh, a beautiful play by Turnbull who made the tackle. Turnbull had a great day last week against Maryland. Watch 87 on the top of the screen. Play off the block of the tight end, pushes him in the backfield, and makes the hit. You can't do it any better. But of course, he grabbed the little face mask along the way. It was a great defensive effort by the six foot five, 234 pound Turnbull. Now, is it going to be a five yard face mask or is it going to be more? Let's wait for the determination. Our official here today, that's going to be the referee, is William McDonald. Face mask, defense, 15 yards. 15 yards. The umpire. Ronald, Ronald Plagues, Earl Sell, the health linesman, Paul Ty is the line judge, the side judge, Charles Phillips, the field judge, Walter Lucas, Nick Trainer, the back judge. And the penalty marched off against West Virginia, Nate getting a great and play. And Nalen's upset about it because he felt it was an incidental face mask, and they gave him a 15-yard penalty. A great play turns into a big break for the Pitt Panthers. They converted to a first down, and they're in excellent field position at their own 44. Dickerson to throw. Has some time across the middle to his tight end, Vernon Kirk. He dropped the football, but was he blown dead? Yes, he was at the 46-yard line. That's Chris a, Herring on the top. That's the first reception of the year for Kirk. Kirk, an uh, outstanding blocker. They do not use their tight ends in the pass game very often. They like them as blockers. Only one reception by the tight ends coming into this game, and that was by his backup, Tom Eubner. So Kirk makes the, the play a very short gain, and uh, 
they're opening their offense a little bit with Darnell Dickerson, who has the ability to throw the football. He threw for 56 touchdown passes in high school in Detroit, Michigan. I don't think either team has done anything beyond two yards on first down. Here's Adam Walker, the lone setback. And on the counter play, he gets the carry. And he follows the block of Roman Matus. Off the left side, Ronaldo Turnbull picks up the tackle just shy of midfield. One of the one of the really impressive things about the West Virginia defense is their ability to come off the blocks and get to the football. They're all big and they're all very quick. And Turnbull playing at his size on a tight end really creates havoc. He's from the Virgin Islands. An assistant basketball coach at West Virginia found him while he was recruiting down there. He was playing football down there, not basketball. But to the top side, you see Tootin and Osborne going split on third down and five. Dickerson, play action. Big rush on. Parker chasing. Here's the throw. He wisely gets rid of it out of bounds. Big heat put on by West Virginia. West Virginia went man for man on the two wide receivers. They took their free safety, Whitmore, and their, their uh, cornerback, Edwards, and they went one-on-one -on, -one on the wide receivers which permitted the defensive line to put quick pressure right here right here on the quarterback force him out of the pocket and he throws the ball away and Pitt is forced to punt Van Horn back for his second kick of the day his first one was 43 this one was tipped it was blocked and it's going to take a West Virginia bounce. It's tapped down at the 31-yard line, but that one definitely was influenced. Van Horn took a lot of time to read the label on that football, and that's why somebody got into him. A 19-yard punt, and that changes field position drastically for the West Virginia Mountaineers, who get the ball on their third possession. Score is tied. Here's the punt again. And the block is made by Mike Fox, getting the block on Jeff Van Horn. That's the reason why Pitt only got 19 yards out of that he kick. He took his time on that play, and uh, Mike Fox, the big defensive tackle, got his hands on it. Pitt's got good field position. West Virginia with the football at their own 31. Here is Harris to throw. Has some time, steps up and fires long for Phillips. Incomplete, nearly intercepted, and a flag on the play. A flag on the play. Let's see if we can pick it up. Cornell Holloway may be guilty of it. Well, let's see how this play may go. Here we go. It's a it's a drop back action by Major Harris. He's looking upfield for Calvin Phillips, number 82. He's got plenty of time as we watch it from the end zone. And he delivers the football. In doing so, we're going to get offensive interference, it looks like, right here. Let's watch it. As Holloway goes up for the ball, offense. and 82 Phillips obstructs his opportunity to catch the ball. The official Second called it, and West Virginia is taken right back inside their 20-yard line. Second major penalty for the Mountaineers this afternoon. Still no score. It's going to be second and a bundle, about 25. Three penalties now for West Virginia, 35 yards. That's more than either team has gained in offense here this afternoon. Here's Harris, optioning to the top side, calls his own number at the 30, at the 40, at midfield, and he gets the first down in the Pittsburgh territory. Best play from scrimmage thus far this afternoon. That's Major Harris in front of his home crowd. He's from Brashear High School here in Pittsburgh. A 38-yard game. What happens here is as he comes down the line, fakes to his fullback, as he comes down the line, the man responsible for him, number 55, Osowski, gets cut off. And right away, there's a hole. Harris, with his speed and size, just turns it on, gets upfield, and that's what can happen to you with Major Harris. He can break it up. He gets out of bounds, and a big gain, and takes him right off the hook. they got great field position. Here's the pitch. A.B. Brown coming upfield, gets his way to about the 41-yard line. Bunch of people from Pitt on the tackle, but let's take a look at what Pitt wants to do defensively for that report down to the sidelines and Stan Sabley. Having, having trouble with that report on the sideline. We'll go back to Stan a little bit later on in the ball game. Now it brings up second down and six after the gain of four. West Virginia with yes, the ball. Here, I start. There's Taylor. And now here is Harris pitching to Brown on the corner at the 35. And ridden out of bounds by Cornell Holloway. 
right down there around the 31 yard line. That was a little counter option that time as uh, Harris comes down the line of scrimmage and he turns up field and pitches the ball as he's going upfield to Holloway on the corner. And that's the way the offense should operate, especially the option offense. And Mike Gottfried knows they've got to take care of each individual on it, the fullback, the quarterback, and the tailback. And this is where West Virginia is very powerful in running the three-way option. First down. Here is Harris going to his fullback this time, Craig Taylor. Not much there. Carnell Smith was the man who contained him on the play. Let's go back down to the sidelines and try it again to find out what's happening with Pitt defensively. Stan Sabrin. Steve, we had thought Pitt would try to box the defensive ends to play contain on Major Harris. Exactly the opposite. Pitt is trying to crash his defensive ends either inside straight up field and let the linebackers cover outside. It cost them on that long 38 yard run so they're not boxing. They're crashing the line of scrimmage going right at Major Harris letting the linebackers do the contain. And that puts a lot of pressure on those freshman outside linebackers. Here's Harris to throw on second down all kinds of time. Now he'll put it up for the end zone going for Rembert touchdown. Virginia, there's Reggie Rembert out of Independence Junior College. Well, great job by the offensive line for Pittsburgh. They gave Major Harris forever. He looked, he looked, he started to run, and he decided to throw again. And Rembert, the big six foot six, 200 pounder, the junior college transfer came open, and he's got the gun to find him. Out of the hold of Chuck Levinas, Charlie Bauman's kick is up, and it is good. His 22nd straight point after a touchdown. Let's see the play again from the end zone. Look. You just can't afford to give a guy like Major Harris with his talent this much time. Excellent job up front. He waits. He looked for his tight end crossing first. Now he wanders around a little bit, and he finds Rembert coming open in the end zone against the sophomore Riddick who could not stay with him. He fell down, excuse me, 43. Troy Washington, the free safety, and Rembert using his size, his speed, and his agility makes it into a touchdown. West Virginia, 7 to nothing. We'll be back after this word from your local station. That's how it happened. Six plays. Reggie Rembert, 33 yards upstairs from Major Harris's third touchdown, the pass of the year, and West Virginia on the board, 7 to nothing. But it's all Major Harris, the ability to get out of trouble, to turn a broken play, to run the option, and then to sit in the pocket, find an open receiver 30 to 40 yards downfield and put the ball on the money. He's the talent. He's outstanding coming into this game. He was heralded as one of the top maybe three quarterbacks in the country, and he's proven it in the first three games of the season. And he's working behind a veteran offensive line, and those people have some pretty long memories of the years against Pittsburgh. Well, we said coming into this game that West Virginia had a lot on the line. This is a veteran team. They really feel it may be one of the best they've ever had, and they've got a chance to really register on the national scene this year. Got a change on the kickoff unit. Brad Carroll, the sophomore from Hatfield, Pennsylvania, is kicking off instead of Charlie Bauman. His kick taken at the 10-yard line and brought back by Mike Hadley inside the 20th of 15. Just an eight-yard return, and Steve Grant makes the tackle. So the change for West Virginia, they were worried last year, we heard them talking after the game about not getting enough depth on those kickoffs. Now uh, they didn't get an awful lot of depth there, but their kick coverage was good, only well, limiting know, the receiver to five. They were ready, they scored a big touchdown, that kickoff team was up and they covered well. And now Darnell Dickerson starting out on his own 15 yard line. Sets him up in the eye, that's Crossman, the fullback, behind him Walker. Pitch to Walker. Walker cuts back against where the block was set up and gets just to the line of scrimmage. Scott Summits is, of course, uh, stopped right there. Walker, of course, uh, had a great week last week, 327 yards thus far this season, 163 last week. It's exciting. I had to um, compliment my offensive line for that. They're doing a tremendous job at executing the plays and getting their assignments right. Like them to work a little bit harder. Second down and eight for only two yards on the play. Crossman and Walker line up again behind Darnell Dickerson. Mm -hmm. 
Delay action, and it goes to Walker, and Walker caught from behind, and he'll have to struggle to get back to the original line of scrimmage. See, Walker's ability is he's exceptionally quick and elusive, and he's always looking to cut the ball back. But West Virginia's staying at home. The whole defensive right side of the line was there looking for him to make that cut. They've got to generate some offense with their tailback. They are a tailback-oriented team, and he's got to get it going. But it's tough to do it against a defense that really comes off its block so well and fills those holes and those gaps and don't give him a chance to cut it back. Gain of about two. Walker, five carries on the day, seven yards. Third down and six. Pitt trailing West Virginia by seven. Dickerson in the pocket, has a man open, intercepted by Alvoid Mays. Pass was intended for Henry Tootin. Mays stepped right in front of it, second straight week, he's picked one off. As we watch Dickerson drop back, he looks left, but he's going to come back to the left side, to his left side, to number 81, Tootin. But Mays, number three, steps right in front of it, perfectly timed, makes a key interception. Last week, he made a key interception against Maryland, and Alvoid Mays from Bradenton, Florida, puts West Virginia inside the 25-yard line. Out of Pratt Junior College, here's Harris, delay, cutback, goes to Brown. Brown up over the 25-yard line to about the 23. Big pot up there, Sims is in there to make the stop, along with Richard Allen and Jerry Osowski, the middle linebacker for Pittsburgh. You know, coming into this ball game, they love to sprint the quarterback Dickerson on the corner and throw with him in action. They've thrown from the pocket a lot today, and West Virginia's done a nice job of containing Dickerson and forcing him to stay in there. Let's see if they continue to do that down the road. Big blitz on for Pitt. Get away with it with a running play to Brown. He can't turn the corner, gets up to about the 21-yard line. It'll be a gain of two on the play, bringing up third down and eight. Curtis Bray, the freshman from Monroeville, Pennsylvania, in on the stop. Curtis Bray, number 58, as we look at uh, Darnell Dickerson on the sideline with his coaches. Curtis Bray is only a freshman. He was the top scholastic player in the country last year. He plays outside linebacker, did a nice job on the option to hold it to a short gain. Jamie Lamont is now in the ball game along with Reggie Rembert. They go out in pairs to the top as you see Curtis Bray getting in, in, into his position. And here is Major Harris rolling right. Big pressure on by Carnell Smith. Harris backs up. He scrambles and he's going to be caught. Now he throws it in the last second. It is incomplete intended for Rembert. There's a flag downfield. We may have an offensive lineman downfield. There's a flag in the vicinity of about the 18-yard line. Anyway, there's the athletic ability of Major Harris. As we listen to the official here, William McDonald. That's it. Ineligible receiver. As we watch here, he's sprinting on the corner, but it's going to be a pass. He's looking upfield. He's looking for his wide receiver, Phillips. But there's a lot of blue shirts in his face. Now he decides to turn and reverse, but they've got him contained, and he just whistles this. In the meantime, an ineligible receiver, probably an offensive lineman, thinking he was going to tuck it and turn and run. Got downfield. Well, well, you figure after 10 field, seconds, he's got to do something. <laughs> There's William penalty. McDonald making the call, ineligible receiver, and it's a loss of down. 3 0 1 left to go on the first period of play, so this puts West Virginia back to third and 13, about at the 21 yard line. There's Don Nailing, the winningest coach in West Virginia football history. Third down. Here is a big rush by Pittsburgh, but Harris gets out of it. Harris to the corner. Harris upfield. Does he have enough for the first? Steps out of bounds at the 14-yard line. It's going to be very close. It's going to be very close. It might be a little bit short, but it shows you his ability and his strength here. He is. This is a, a designed quarterback draw. As he steps up. He's in the grasp of Osowski, but Osowski breaks that tackle, tucks the ball, gets on the left side, and look at him motor. Six foot one, 215 pounds, got it in close enough, didn't get the first down. It's going to give him a shot at a field goal. So it'll be fourth and inches, and here is Charlie Bauman. He's five for six. He's had one block his longest distance from 47 yards. This one will be from 31. There's the kick. It's up from the left hash, and it is good. And West Virginia capitalizes on Alvoid Mays' interception. 
They knock it in for a field goal to step out in front of 15th ranked Pittsburgh by a score of 10 to nothing on Charlie Bauman's field goal. Don Nealon quite happy with the turn of affairs there. Knows his team's got a lot of work cut out for him. Knows as well that it's <laughs> it's not easy to get out to a big lead and hold it as uh, what happened to him last week. Well, he's happy to come away with three points, and I'm sure Pittsburgh is happy to only give up three points because they turned that ball over in terrific field position, and they could have easily been down by two touchdowns. They've just got to settle in and get a little bit of offense going for them, get some first downs. That's what they haven't done. It's been a frantic first half, quite frankly, with the defense dominating. We talked with Don Nealon last week about uh, the, what he was going through his mind after his team fell down 14 to nothing to Maryland in last week's game. Gosh, what do these Terrapins have on us? Uh, every year we seem like we'd play pretty good and lose to them, and, but finally it came together. And the nice thing about our team last week, uh, when we got down 14 to nothing, there was no panic, uh, nothing on the sidelines. The guy said, hey, coach, relax. This one's in the bag. And I'm saying, oh, brother, these guys are shook up. But anyhow, they went out and played good ball. That's the experience of his football team. When you've got experienced players, they don't get excited. They've got confidence in themselves, and he's got a lot of experience throughout this club, offensively and defensively, and he's got a great, talented quarterback in Major Harris. And you wonder what's going through Mike Gottfried's mind now. He's in the same position Don Nealon was in last week, but he's got a much younger club to contend with. Brad Carroll with the kick. Michael Hadley with the reception at the five. Up to the 20, the wedge at the middle of the field and gets out to about the 28-yard line. Nice tackle made by Zippy Shearer, a backup defensive end, uh, playing on the special teams. A 23-yard return gives Pitt the football right outside their own 25 to the 28-yard line. Darnell Dickerson trotting back into the huddle. He'll have Tootin and Osborne as his wide receivers this time around. Crossman at fullback. Crossman, of course, is a transfer from Kansas. He started as a cornerback at Kansas when Mike Gottfried was coaching right there. And then followed Gottfried here to Pittsburgh as the transfer student. Now he lines up at fullback. He's out of the eye. Osborne's in the slot to the near side. Dickerson rolling out. Rolling on the corner. Chain Turnbull chasing him, and he's complete to Osborne at midfield. Darrell Whitmore on the tackle, Osborne on the catch. They call Dickerson a gifted athlete. This is a bootleg, a naked bootleg, where he just pulls, comes out on his own, no blocker in front of him. He's looking for Osborne, who's running a deep sideline cut, and that's a beautifully thrown pass on the run, which Darnell Dickerson can do, and only a sophomore. Osborne's done it all in his career at Pitt. He threw a touchdown pass against West Virginia at Morgantown a couple of years ago to Vernon Kirk. He's a three-sport letterman. First down for Pitt. Dickerson goes to the first man through. That's Crossman right up ahead. And he is uh, going to be stopped by Scott Summits just as he crossed the 47-yard line of West Virginia. Very important here now, as we noted, for Pitt to get some offense, get some first downs, get some field position. Keep the ball away from the West Virginia offense is what one of the things that Mike Gottfried said when asked, what do you have to do to win tomorrow? We got to keep the ball away from their offense. We got to make some first downs. Tootin to the top of your screen. Stacking up in the eye, Walker, and uh, it's going to be Crossman back there at fullback on second down. Here is Crossman again. And Crossman gets out close to the first down. Let's see where they mark his forward progress out over the 40 yard line. Let's go down to the sidelines now and Stan Sabrin with a report. Thank you very much, Steve. I just came from behind the West Virginia bench, and one of the defensive assistants for West Virginia was telling his defensive players, watch number 72 of Pitt, Chris Getz, one of the offensive linemen. He's tipping off the play. The coach said, watch 72. He'll lead you to the ball. I don't know what he's doing to tip it off, but the West Virginia Mountaineer defensive staff has found some sort of weakness. Crossman picks up the first down in the meantime. At the West Virginia 39-yard line, their first excursion into Mountaineer territory, and here's Dickerson to throw. He's got this man Tootin inside the 30, down to the 25-yard line. Whitmore on the tackle. Real nice call, first and 10, and they go right with the pass, drop back action, gives, they give uh, Dickerson plenty of time here. Watch the pass pro, and he's got time to let Tootin come down and curl underneath the linebacker, executed well first down and Pittsburgh's offense is coming together first and 10 at the 24 yard line of West Virginia that mascot's pretty happy about things so far 
like to see his team on. He would like to see his team on the scoreboard. Here comes the inside handoff to the fullback Crossman, and he picks his way down to the 20-yard line. Oh, Orlando comes up to help out on the tackle along with Chris Herring and Ronaldo Turnbull. Rather than running sprint draw action, delay action, they're going right at him a little bit to try and pick up a seam and maybe get some yardage and keep this thing alive. Good yardage on first down, makes it second down and six. As you see the West Virginia sideline looking on with Pitt threatening. Coming into this ball game, you had two teams that were averaging a lot of points per game, so you know they're not going to be kept off that scoreboard for very long. And a lot of yards per carry, as a matter of fact. It's six per play offensively. Osborne across the formation. Hand off to Walker. Walker with a little stutter step into the hole over the 20, into the 15-yard line. Chris Herring in on the stop for West Virginia. We are approaching the end of the first parade of play. It's been an exciting one, and it's been all West Virginia. The Mountaineers leading Pittsburgh by a score of 10 to nothing. We'll return to Pitt Stadium after this from your local stations. West Virginia leading Pittsburgh by a score of 10 to nothing as we take the turn into the second quarter. Let's take a look at that last play. You talked about Chris Getz. He's on the right of your screen. Let's see if he tips this one off. In blue, number 72 to the right of the offensive center. Watch this block as he picks up on 94, Chris Parker, and he permits his fullback, Crossan, to cut back and make a good yardage inside. I don't know what he tipped that time, but he made a great block to make this thing go, and it's third down and short as Pitt is driving. I know what he tipped. He tipped Parker, third and short. Three men deep in that backfield. That's Osborne. He'll step out of the formation. And off Walker, and he slipped. Slipped and fell shy of the first down, covering him up as Pickett and Orlando. Big decision here for Mike Godfrey. It's going to be fourth and one with the ball sitting just outside the 15-yard line. He's looking to get the ball to 29 Walker. He's looking to cut back and get the first down. And his right, he just slips right there. He doesn't make it. And Chuck, uh, excuse me. And Mike Gottfried has made the decision. He's going for the field goal. Jeff Van Horn trots on for his third try this season. There you see the first quarter stats. West Virginia leading in total yardage. A lot of that onto the ground and 38 of it from Major Harris on his scramble. Van Horn on a 32-yard attempt for the right hash. There's the kick out of the hold of Osborne. And it is no good. No good. West Virginia takes over. Van Horn, Stun goes to the sideline with his second miss thus far this season. That capped an eight-play drive. Pitt held possession of the football, moved the ball well, except for a slip by Walker. They had it well blocked, had to bring the field goal kicker on. And Van Horn, who was played by inconsistency last year, was 10 out of 23, well, came up short. There's no question that there is, there's real problems in the kicking game for Pittsburgh. And uh, this is the one shortcoming they have, and it can come to haunt them not only here but throughout the season. First and ten, West Virginia operating from their own 18. Hand off to the fullback, and that's going to be Taylor. Not much there. Gets up over the 20 to about the 22-yard line. Let's take a look at that field goal try again. You get the feeling from Van Horn that he thinks it's good as you watch his reaction, but all field goal kickers think it's good. He pulled it to the left, and he missed it. It's His holder, Bill Osborne, knew it wasn't. He did not share in the celebration, and so after the two-yard gain and West Virginia getting the ball back here, it's second down and actually nine. Taylor and Brown, the setbacks. Here's Harris. Harris pitches at the last second, picking it off the Rogers Brown. And wait a second, they're going to say it's going to be a forward pass incomplete. So it's an incompleted pass, and that kills the play as Harris that's a that's a really good call by the officials to pick up on that right away and watch it as you watch from the end zone he comes down he fakes to the fullback he's going to turn it up here he's in the grasp by the time he gets it out to the to the pitch man it's forward and it hits the ground so it's an incompleted pass and the officials were right on the play you can see ab brown had to step right into that don nealon a little bit upset his team leading though on third down and nine and they lead by 10. west virginia at their own 21. harris Drop back, goes to the corner, almost intercepted. He was looking out there for his running back, actually his fullback, Taylor, and Curtis Gray was covering on the play. Curtis Gray did an excellent job of getting in between, getting in between the receiver and the quarterback. Actually, the man that was open 
was 81 Tootin in the middle of zone here, and he decides to go long. He's got a first down if he hits Tootin right there, number 81. Good job by the defense. Pittsburgh is going to get the football back in pretty good field position. Lance Carrion averaging 48 yards on two punts this afternoon. He boomed one for 47. He gets a good one this time, sending Alonzo Hampton deep. Gets it at the 24. Back pedals and waits for the wedge. Cuts up the middle, and he's hit by Steve Grant once again and shelved right there at the 32-yard line. So West Virginia will get the football, or rather Pittsburgh will get the football back after Carrion's 54-yard punt. West Virginia up by 10. This is Stan Saverin behind the Pitt bench. The Pitt defensive line, which thought they could neutralize West Virginia's offensive line, has been further injured. Burt Grossman will not play today. And Mark Spindler, the All-American defensive tackle, is out with a hip pointer. He has had an ice bag. There you see him, number 93. He's been running on the sideline, has not been able to go, so he may miss the rest of the game. Back to you, Steve. Thanks, Stan. It's first and 10 for Pitt at their own 31-yard line. Crossman in motion. Back to throw, Dickerson. Darnell finds Tootin over the middle at the 47. At the 43, and knocked down there by Darrell Whitmore. By going to the pass on the early down, first down, they take away any chance of real rush. They give Dickerson lots of time here and gives Tootin, number 81, who's going to run a dig or an in pattern behind the linebackers and in front of the deep backs. And he comes underneath, he's wide open, and he's got lots of speed. And he can catch the football. That's Henry Tootin from Camden, New Jersey, only a junior. He leads this club with five receptions coming into this ball game. He has yet to score, but he's made some good yardage on patterns just like that. He's got two catches today. That's a 26-yard gain for Tootin. It's first and 10, Pittsburgh. And off Walker has an opening. Gets up over the 40 down to about the 38-yard line of West Virginia, maybe a little bit more. That's what they got to do. They got to run behind the experience. The experience is Stepnowski, the right guard, Caliguire, the center, and the right tackle, Matus. They've got some big size in that offensive line. They've got to go after West Virginia at the point of attack. That's Bob Shaw, who is the defensive coordinator for West Virginia. His stops on the tour have been many. Akron, Michigan, Cincinnati, Arizona, Arkansas tour of duty in the USFL. He's calling the defensive signals and second and five for Pittsburgh and the West Virginia 37. Dickerson on the option finds Walker. Walker has the first down gets to the 30 yard line. Willie Edwards in on the stop. They don't run a lot of option, but they have it in their playbook. They like to run a little bit of it. And that time, Darnell Dickerson ran the counter option back into the sideline, got the ball to his tailback, Walker on the corner. Good yardage, first down, the pit offense, although they came up short on the field goal, is starting to move the football. They're at the West Virginia 30-yard line. Mike Godfrey told us yesterday they may run maybe seven or eight pure option plays for Dickerson. When he carries a ball, usually it's a straight out, roll out, or sweep. Out of the eye, on first down. Crossman has it, steps behind Stepnoski and goes straight ahead. That's Getz throwing a block in there as well. And he gets inside the 30 to about the 28. Scott Summits in on the tackle. Across that offensive line for Pitt at left tackle, Tom Ricketts is a big one. He's 6'5", 285. Many feel he may be as good a tackle as there is in the country. He's a three-year starter. Chris Getz, we've already mentioned, at left guard. Caliguire, who moved from a guard position to a center position. Stepnoski and Matus, all good size, all experienced. Second and eight from the West Virginia 28. Pittsburgh with a ball. That's Williams across the formation. And here is Walker with a carry. Not much there. And Pickett is the first man through to deliver a hit along with Summits and Herring. Tough to run the counter or the slow hitting or the delay stuff. They just fly to the football. Robert Pickett, in particular, an outside linebacker. There's a two year starter from Miami, Florida. Very active. He closes off well. You got to get right into these guys and right at them. Third down and about 10. Standing back at the 30 yard line. There you see the third down conversions. West Virginia 0 for 4. Pittsburgh looking at their sixth right now. Crossman. Osborne in the backfield, actually four wide receivers on the field. Dickerson with a rush on, going to the corner, it is complete. This is Williams. He's close to the first down, but does he have enough? He's short of the first down, but a nice pass. Dickerson dropped back action. His line gave him good protection and gave Jackson a chance to get open. Inside, he cut back to the middle. He's going to come up short. Again, Mike Gottfried's got to make a choice. 
And his field goal unit has already missed one, and now they're going to take a timeout. They're going to think about over. it. You bet. And his field goal kicker, Jeff Van Horn, missed from 32 from about this same position in the field. So Pittsburgh will take time to talk it over. 9.55 left to go in the first half of play. It's West Virginia 10, Pitt nothing. We'll be back after this from your local stations. Welcome back to Pitt Stadium in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The Pitt Panthers have a big decision to make. They're fourth down and very short, and they have apparently made it. Jeff Van Horn stays on the sideline. Darnell Dickerson goes into the game or stays into the game, and quarterback Pitt is going for it. And that's it. I think it's a matter of confidence in his kicking game, and he's just decided after missing that first field goal, he's got to try it here emotionally. He wants to get the first down. They've got great field position. So Mike Gottfried, there he is, has decided we're going to go try and get that first down. He's got Dickerson in at quarterback. West Virginia leading Pittsburgh right now by a score of 10 to nothing. You know, before he came here, Mike Gottfried was a head coach at Murray State, University of Cincinnati, and Kansas before he took the job at Pitt. And after two years at Pitt, they decided they liked him so much that they renewed and extended his contract. He's got a long-term contract. He's really arrived in this campus. They like the stability that I think he can bring to this program. Seventh play of the drive started on the pit 32, but no play as important as this one. It's going to be fourth down and about less than a yard. Ball inside the 21 yard line to the 20. And if you look at the yard marker on the far side, he needs to get inside that to about the 19 and a half. Everybody in in a compressed backfield. Walker and Crossman the setback, double tight end. Actually, three tight ends in the game. Dickerson calls his own number. He may have it. Dickerson followed his guard. It looks like he's got it. Two tight ends. They're in there close, and Dickerson just goes up under the left, over the left guard, and Caliguer. And watch Parker, the defensive tackle 94. He raises up and permits Dickerson to slip under him to make the play. And also, he got a great block from Caliguire. Caliguire really fired out on the nose guard that time. First down, Pittsburgh. Dickerson to throw. Scrambling. And they'll get him from behind. He loses the football. Out of it goes out of bounds. It'll stay in Pitt's possession, apparently. Yes, it will. Back to the 32-yard line. Great effort by Herring. And they came with the linebackers on the early down, went man for man, thinking pass. They put pressure, forced him out of the pocket, and Chris Herring, the linebacker, 49, you'll see it here. They push him out of the pocket by the pressure from the inside. 49 picks up on him here. Herring, who can run down people from his linebacker position, catches Dickerson. And he's fortunate as he flips that ball to the side for that thing to go out of bounds. Chris Herring, the junior from Pueblo, California, started last year, excuse me, Colorado, started last year in his first year at West Virginia. Loss of 12 brings up second and 22. Dickerson to throw. Short pattern has a man complete. That's Tootin inside the 25 to about the 22 yard line. So he got some of it back, a gain of about nine on the play. Well, it's pretty tough to get it all back in one shot. They picked up enough to get it back in close. It's going to be third and long. Watch, Watch this play. It's almost possession. Great effort here by Fox 61 as he tries to pick that thing before it goes out of bounds. We mentioned Herring. Herring's a junior college player out of Pueblo, Colorado. Came to West Virginia last year and started for him uh, in his first year on campus, and he's been a mainstay of their defense ever since. West Virginia 10-0 over Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh staring at a third and 14 from the Mountaineer 23-yard line. Dickerson wants to throw. Looks for Tootin in the corner. It is complete touchdown. Henry Tootin from Camden, New Jersey, the junior at six feet, 175, his first touchdown reception of the season. And Henry Tootin just got great field position, body position on Willie Edwards, 
and a beautiful pass by Dickerson, and he got up in front of him. This was an exceptional play by both the quarterback and the receiver to get a score. We've got a change in the placement. It's going to be Kaplan, the freshman, getting the call, and the point after is good. Or rather, that is Bauman. I'm sorry. Going the other way, Charlie Bauman for West Virginia. Thought there was a change in there. Watch it here. This is a beautifully thrown ball. There's Tooten. He just out jumps Edwards. He's got position on him, and Edwards holds on. But he doesn't make the play, and it's a great effort by Tooten to make this catch as you watch it, as it comes right at you at ground level. This ball has a lot of authority on it, and Tooten just gets up in front and with Edwards all over him, still makes the play. That's a great catch, and Pitt is right back in this ball game. And that was Scott Kaplan on the point after for Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh on the board. They trail by three. We're back at Pittsburgh where the Panthers have hit the scoreboard. Henry Tooten drawing one in from Darnell Dickerson. Scott Kaplan kicked the extra point, and Pittsburgh trails by only a field goal. They're right back in this ball game, and it was uh, again the quarterback, Dickerson, who brought him down the field. He can run, he can pass. We've got two great ones here today, and we know they can score, so it's just a matter of. The defense digging in and making a big place for him. Right now, we've got a ball game, 10-7. Plenty of time left in this second quarter. Napoleon is deep now for West Virginia. Kaplan to kick. He was only supposed to handle kickoffs today. Found himself doing placements. And there's his kick. And Napoleon is going to run under it. No, it's going to be the up back who will get it. And he is crushed at about the 27-yard line. Prentice right in on the tackle after the 11 yard return. Right playing on the special teams and this is West Virginia's start on their drive of the 28. They sacrificed something to have Kaplan kick off because he doesn't have a, a strong leg as far as kickoffs go but he gets a ball up high and gives his coverage a chance to get under at that time Prentice Wright made a great play from the outside. 827 left to go in the first half West Virginia with a football. Aaron Evans is in at fullback this time. Play action. Here's the reverse to Rembert. Rembert turns the corner. He's got speed. Gets out to the 40 yard line as he squared his shoulders and gets the first down, it looks like. Cornell Holloway in on the stop after an 11 yard game. We saw them run that play last week, and Reggie Rembert, as we look at the scoring drive, 10 plays, 67 yards, and a touchdown pass to Tootin to get him back in the game at 10 7. But Reggie Rembert can really fly. He can catch the ball and get up feeling go deep but he's excellent on running those reverses and the threat of him always being there puts pressure on the outside linebackers for West Virginia to stay at home. That time they didn't and he got a first down. Evans and Brown the setbacks now. Adrian Moss is the tight end that came to the near side and the handoff is going to go. It's going to go to the second man through and that is going to be A.B. Brown. Curtis Bray on the tackle for Pittsburgh after the three yard game. Last week when they were down 14 to nothing to Maryland, Don Nalen decided, hey, we're going to go right after these people and run up inside. They're starting to do a little bit of more of that with their tailback and their fullback behind their very big and experienced offensive line. Second and eight, here's Harris on the pitch. And this is Brown gets back to about the 45 yard line. It'll be a gain of about three on the play. Osavsky also. Hampton there in on the stop and let's get out of the sidelines for a word on the passing game for Pittsburgh Stan Saverin. Thank you Steve. Of course receivers always think they can get open but Henry Tootin went to Darnell Dickerson on several occasions and said I can beat the guy on this pattern. They finally went to the play indeed touchdown. Before that Johnny Rembert of West Virginia has gone to Major Harris on the sideline told him he could beat his man on a deep pattern. They called it upstairs and got the OK to go ahead and try it. Steve. Third down coming up for West Virginia. Here is the pass. It is by Harris out into the flats. Osowski on the tackle. And getting the ball is going to be Rembert on the corner again, just as Stan pointed out. This is off the play axe. This is off of a counter option. He comes down the line like he's going to pitch it, but he pulls back, and the receiver, Rembert, comes down and curls back to the inside. Very tough to defend against because of the threat of the run. Everybody reacts, gets upfield, the linebackers particularly, that have to cover underneath against that curl pattern. Another first down for West Virginia. They're in pit territory. Play fake by Harris again. Harris guns in traffic going for a man in traffic it is incomplete in the end zone intended over there for Jamie Lamont. 
That time there was a little hesitation on the part of Major Harris. When he threw the ball, he threw it off balance, he threw it under, he threw it short, and he was fortunate he didn't come up with, with, uh, with an interception. The crowd was looking for some interference, but it was so poorly thrown that the officials made the right call. Incomplete pass, second down and 10. Calvin Phillips comes to the near side, the far side occupied by Rembert on second and 10. Fast moving first half. Here's the pitch to Brown. Brown straight ahead goes to about the 36 yard line. Coming up to clean up the play as Washington also in on the stop is going to be Ricardo McDonald, the freshman linebacker from Patterson, New Jersey. Very hard to get outside. Pittsburgh playing their linebackers up the field, conscious of the option. As we look at other scores from the ACC, Duke ahead of Virginia second quarter. But that time he cut it back, A.B. Harris, as he's uh, A.B. Brown, as he started on the corner, turned it back inside, made good yardage. You see Georgia and South Carolina tied as well. Third down and about three for West Virginia at the pit 36. Mountaineers lead by three. Here's Brown on the corner. Hampton wrestles him down. It's going to be close to a first down. Excellent job by Alonzo Hampton, who... Uh, Mike Gottfried said has played very well this year. He's been a he's been a pleasant surprise for him on the corner. He's got size and speed. He just lacked experience coming into the season. But watch the play here. He just doesn't give an inch, makes a big play on 28. And they're gonna have to measure for this one. It's gonna be awfully close. Very close over there by the pit sideline as you look at Alonzo Hampton stepping right in. There's not an awful lot of experience. In that defensive secondary, really, Troy Washington, the only returning starter. He's the key man at safety, and he's the leader, but they had to move Riddick, Lewis Riddick, from uh, his fullback position on offense and put him at strong safety. And, of course, Cornell Holloway and Hampton are two new cornerbacks for him. So they are inexperienced, but they're fine athletes, and Hampton in particular has come along real fast. Holloway came into his own the last two or three games of the season last season for Pittsburgh and drew starting assignments. But really, you're talking about guys who have very few starts. And here's how close it is. It is not going to be a first down. It's going to be instead fourth and inches. Okay, with the ball sitting outside the 30-yard line of Pitt, Don Nalen has to make the decision on fourth down, and he's made it. He's going for it. Forced by the great play of Alonzo Hampton, Aaron Evans finds himself in the backfield. He's a great blocker from Richmond, Virginia. In this situation, normally West Virginia behind their big and experienced offensive line, you would think they'd run the football. But with Major Harris at quarterback, anything can happen. We saw him come up in a similar situation on a goal line last week and run a bootleg for a touchdown. Fourth and inches. Ball at the 33-yard line of Pittsburgh. Harris with Evans and Brown in back of it. Phillips and Rembert split to the bottom. Here's the pitch. Brown on the corner. Osavsky in pursuit. He's got the first down. And a flag after the play. That flag's going to go against Pitt. It's going to be on the sideline. But we heard earlier when Stan Saverin was talking about how they were going to defend against the option that they wanted the linebacker to cover here. The linebacker, 55 Osavsky, doesn't have the speed nor the angle to make the play. And there it is. Upfield, big play. Watch the push out of bounds. And watch Osavsky as he comes across here. He's hustling, but he just doesn't have the speed to keep up with A.B. Brown. There's the play out of bounds, number 43. Late hit. Out of Washington, bounds. the free safety, Put gives him a shove. And this puts Pitt in really tough field position. Brings West Virginia down to the Pitt 13 and a half yard line. You tack on half the distance to the goal line after the gain. It's, it goes inside the 30. 524 left to go, first half. West Virginia 10 7 over Pittsburgh, and the Mountaineers are driving. Here is Brown, not much there. Sims made one of the hits on the tackles for Pittsburgh. Also, Curtis Bray getting up from the bottom of the pile. Homecoming for A.B. Brown, also for Major Harris, both Pittsburgh area players. When you look at this Pittsburgh defense, we mentioned if there was a difference in these two ball clubs, it's probably the lack of experience on the defense. Not talent, not raw talent, but it's inexperience. Bray, a freshman starting. Boykin backs him up. McDonald, another freshman at linebacker. They're going to hang tough right here. Here comes Harris on the option, tucks it inside. A flag is thrown. He gets back to the original line of scrimmage. Osavsky in on the stop with Bray, but let's see what the flag is going to be. Big effort by that pit defense, and Osavsky is the leader. He's the middle linebacker. 
He's the guy they look to. He's got the experience. Big play as he comes up. They gamble there. Jerry Osowski, a senior. He did not play last year against West Virginia. He was injured at a Youngstown, Ohio. He's the coach on the field. They really uh, respect him highly, not only for his talent, but just what he brings to the, to the entire ball club. He's got his job cut out for him this year with two regular freshmen on either side of him in those uh, outside linebacker spots. He's the man who's got to keep them together, especially with Grossman out. See what the call is going to be. Holding. It's a holding call. During the run, 10 yard against penalty. West Virginia. Second down. So this will move the ball back outside the 20 to the 21 yard line. Actually to the 22. Mentioned Davey Brown there. You see the penalties. West Virginia has been penalized six times for 50 yards. Pittsburgh's only received one, that last one, just moments ago. Grannis Bell comes into that defensive huddle. Don Nealon has sent the play in. 426 left to go, as you see in the first half. Time rolling down, and here is Harris looking for the end around to, rent to Bell, and he decides wisely to keep it as Gray gets it back to the 33 yard line for an 11 yard loss. Pittsburgh likes to come after you. They don't do it as much necessarily because of their inexperience, but they come hard here, and they're looking to go again with this reverse. They brought Prentice Bell number one into the game, but there's much too much penetration right there. As we see, number 58, Bray, the freshman, makes the play initially, and then everybody else with Osavsky coming to the football, and Major Harris is now looking at third and 29. Actually, a good decision by Harris not to hand off to Grantis Bell in that situation. He's going to be back to throw. Big rush on, gets rid of it, and he was hit as he got rid of it. It's intercepted. Intercepted by Troy Washington at the two-yard line. And he was so anxious. Big play by Washington. Once again, Major Harris throws the ball short. Gives the free safety Washington 43 a chance to come up and make the play. His feet went from out under him, or else he would have made a good return. But Pitt stops the drive and gets the ball back. And they'll get the ball back at their own one yard line, but they're down by three. Welcome back to Pitt Stadium. The Pitt Panthers hold West Virginia off on a big play here at the end of the first half. The pass interception by Washington. Washington comes up on this football as it was underthrown by Harris. He slips there, and they take over on the one-yard line, stop a drive. West Virginia comes away with no points, and Pitt still trails only by three. But they're backed up 99 yards away. Here is Dickerson. He's going to throw from his own end zone. Rushes out of there in a hurry. He's out over the five and gets down to the eight-yard line. Ellis is to make sure that he doesn't go any further. Interesting call on first down. Interesting call because they want to get it upfield. He didn't expect that kind of pressure, but his athletic ability got him out of trouble here. But only a, a player of this quality can do this. Watch Dickerson as he slides away from that tackle by Parker, gets out over the five-yard line, and makes a bad play into a good gain. They take that anytime down deep, and they're looking at second and four on their own eight-yard line. Crossman into the ball game now. Second down, about three. Dickerson. Handing it off, this is Walker. Adam Walker over the 10 and gets thrown down by Daryl Whitmore and Bo Orlando and Ronaldo Turnbull just as he crosses the 11-yard line close to the 12, but he's got the first down. Didn't want to get him out there, didn't want to give him a chance. They want to kick, force a kick here, West Virginia, if they could, with the time on the clock just over, uh, just under three minutes, maybe get the ball back. But Pitt, because of Darnell Dickerson, got a chance and made a first down. To the top of your screen, that is Williams. Out of the eye formation, Dickerson calling the signals. Back to throw, has some time, over the middle, incomplete, looking for his tight end, Vernon Kirk. They're on Ellis, almost got a hand on it. That time he forced the ball. That time he made a mistake and got away with it because the receiver he was looking for had three white jerseys around him, and Ellis almost came up with the interception. Ellis. They're on Ellis, the junior out of Norristown, Pennsylvania, number 66. One of the inside linebackers for West Virginia. Had a great week last week with five tackles versus Maryland. Tom Hubner comes into the formation. Dickerson this afternoon, seven passes for 103 yards in 12 attempts, a touchdown, and he's had one picked off. That's probably the most ambitious that Pitt has gotten in their passing game thus far this season. Second and ten. 
out of the eye. Stepping inside the rush. Nickerson to run. And Dickerson wisely grounds himself at the 23 yard line. Depending on the spot, looks like he's got another first down. Whitmore makes sure he's down. He does have another first down. And again, he got away on a bootleg action. Good block by his left guard. Gets to keep the contained man out of his face. And watch the play here. Watch the guard come over, knock down Turnbull, the outside linebacker responsible for contain. And he gets upfield for the first down. And with a, just over two minutes to go, Pittsburgh is moving the football. First down, Dickerson gives first man through. That's Crossman. Crossman's picking up a lot of work here this afternoon. He moves the ball out over the 28-yard line. Deron Ellis stops him just shy of the 29. Gain of the play of five brings up second and five. Chirpak is in at the left offensive guard. In place of Chris Getz, he actually made that nice block a few moments ago. Chirpak is a, a solid player, can play either side for him. They bring him in, they lose nothing in their starting offensive line. He's 6'4", 270 pounds. He's got experience. He's playing left guard, as you noted. Slot to the top. Second down. Dickerson, second man through Walker, but it is going to be Robert Pickett waiting for him as he got the football. Bringing those outside linebackers. Pickett from the right side, number 45. Outstanding game, outstanding three games thus far. Two years starter. Watch him appear on the scene on the left side. And number 29, Walker, never had a chance to make the cut. He's six foot. He's not big, but he is active and fast. One of the co-captains on the defensive football team. Five tackles and a sack against Maryland. That's his first tackle for loss this season. Pittsburgh facing third down for the eighth time. They've converted two thus far. Third and 11, they're trailing by three. Walker, the lone setback for Darnell Dickerson. Dickerson back to throw. Pocket closes down and torn ball. Saxon at the 18. Got to use their timeouts here. Got to think about it. Oh, I guess they're forgetting. They just want to go in at halftime. Excellent job by the defense. They kept Dickerson. Watch the white jerseys now. He doesn't have a chance to scramble once he looks upfield and decides he wants to run. They can, they really contain him here well. Great play by 87. Ronaldo Turnbull. And as you look upfield, watch the coverage here. Double covering on the outside receiver. Underneath. Good job by the secondary and a good job by the upfront four people to put the pressure on the quarterback. And Don Nealon calls timeout. His football team's going to get the ball back. And that's a pretty good call to make, really, when you consider that Pitt is having trouble with their punt game. Opportunity to get field position and maybe a play. And don't forget, here at halftime, Genesee Cream Ale brings you our Great American Champions feature. Got lots of other things for you here this afternoon as well. But seven seconds remain here with West Virginia going to get the ball back. Well, considering also the, the problems that Pitt has with their punting game, you could very well see just an all-out rush and take the gamble to get that football. And I'm sure that's what we're going to see here. Here's what Jeff Van Horn has done on the day. Two punts, 31 yards. He's had a long one of 43. Had a short one that was partially deflected of 19. But as you pointed out, Bob, on both times, there's been a long time from snap till foot meets leather, so to speak. Well, he's a slow punter, and that's dangerous, and particularly when you got 10, 11 guys up on the line of scrimmage coming after you. They have a single safety. And Prentice right back. They're coming with 10. That's what Jeff Van Horn's done today, as we said. And he'll face 10 men deep. And look at Jeff, what Jeff Van Horn is looking at from the end zone camera that you just saw. He's with his feet on the five-yard line, 10 men coming after him. Brandis Bell, the lone receiver for West Virginia. And Van Horn gets a swift line drive. It's going to drive Bell back, and it may achieve the purpose. It does. Gets it back to the 38-yard line, and time runs out here in the first half. Not a pretty kick, but it did the trick this time as Jeff Van Horn goes to the sideline. An interesting first half. The defense is very strong, but then here a case of West Virginia just buckling down and moving the football. It wasn't pretty, but it was really sloppy at times, but there's a lot of emotion out here, and the defense in a game like this comes alive, and both defenses have made very big plays for West Virginia and Pittsburgh. And we talked about the importance of Major Harris and what he has meant to this football team, especially in that first drive where he got that 38-yard uh, run that saved a drive 
drive and kept the drive alive. Major Harris has been a major part of this afternoon. Darnell Dickerson likewise has played an important role for Pittsburgh, having uh, eight passes completed so far in the first half. He's thrown a touchdown pass to Henry Tootin, and that's where we stand here at halftime. It is West Virginia out in front of Pittsburgh. We're at halftime. Stay tuned. Lots of things coming up. West Virginia 10-7. I know we were tight early, and uh, and so were they. Uh, and then all of a sudden, they exploded. But uh, right now, just trying to get some things going on first down so that we're not always in a second and long area situation. West Virginia's last possession, you had two quarterback sacks from your outside linebackers. Will you continue to do that? Well, I think we're going to come after them a little bit more. And uh, again, they're good. I mean, we just got really just got to be sound, Stan. That's a big thing. Okay, Mike, thanks very much. All right, head coach Mike Godfrey of the Panthers, they trail 10 7. We're set for the second half kickoff. Back upstairs to Steve and Bob. Thank you very much. Stan, and let's take a look at our Apple computer student athlete of the, of the week. He's David Tanzos. Tanzos, an economics and business major, grade point average 3.99. That's caused by one A minus, and that was the highest grade that that particular player, David Tanzos, out of Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, got. He's a junior. And of course, right now, it's West Virginia leading by three, 10 7. Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions exclusive live coverage of Great American Independent Football is brought to you by Rolling Rock Beer, same as it ever was. And by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? That was a very good interview, Tell Stan. That was good. He got some good stuff there. That was good, Stan. Welcome back to Pitt Stadium, and our score is West Virginia 10, Pittsburgh 7. You see Mike Gottfried scanning the sidelines now as West Virginia will kick off here in the second half. And I thought he said some interesting things, throwing the ball on the early downs, first down, trying to come up with enough yardage not to put themselves second and long as we look at some scores around the country. But most importantly, they've got to just keep the ball away from West Virginia's offense and keep moving, and there's a big one. In the second quarter, Rutgers trying to bounce back, leading Penn State. Two teams who were involved in heartbreaking losses a year ago, Clemson 7-0 over Georgia Tech. They're in the first quarter of that football game, and right now Brad Carroll getting set to kick off here for West Virginia. Brad Carroll kicking off instead of Charlie Bauman. Back deep now, Michael Hadley and Lee McRae, number six at the top of your screen. He's going back, and Hadley will take it two yards deep. He'll come out at the 20, cuts to the sideline, has some help. And finally is knocked out of bounds at the 22-yard line. Ron Weaver helps out 25-yard return on that situation. Let's take a look at how the two quarterbacks compare statistically here in the first half. You know, coming into this ball game, it was a game with two great quarterbacks, two talented athletes, could run and pass. And would you see it there? Harris has not done much in the passing department. Dickerson surprises by throwing 12 times in the first half. They have really been a tailback team pit up to this point. 31 of those 48 yards by Harris through the air were caught by Reggie Rembert on that touchdown play. First and 10, Pitt at their own 24. Lone setback is Walker. Back to throw Dickerson on first down. He laces the needle complete over the 32-yard line, complete to Henry Tootin, who's been very active today. And just as Mike Gottfried said, we want to throw the ball a little bit more on first down. They come out, drop back. Tootin comes from the right side of the screen and curls back, and he really puts the ball inside because there's good coverage here. He just makes a great play on the pass. Give that credit to Dickerson and to Tootin for concentrating on the ball. First and ten now for Pittsburgh. They're on 36. Nobody in the backfield, and there may be a mix-up as Bill Osborne looks over the formation and finds Darnell Dickerson bereft of anybody in back of him. I'm well, not sure as if uh, Mike Gottfried had that in his design. I'm sure not with 14:32 uh, left in the uh, third period to have to use one of his timeouts. But better than bust the play. There is number two Reggie Williams, who was a starter last year at the wide receiver position. Tootin came on and really beat him out for that this year. But Williams can go catch the ball. He was the leading receiver on this ball club a year ago. See Gottfried sending Crossman out onto the field, and now he's calling the official over. See where the controversy is over on the sideline. 
and they'll get back to playing here momentarily. But Pittsburgh, more importantly, has to burn a timeout early. Mike Gottfried said about this club, we're a young team, we have a lot of fun, we're very loose. He says, yet there's a quiet confidence about him. There was a quiet confidence about him last week when they played Ohio State. He had a feeling they could win the game. They won big. Today, coming into the game, he was more concerned because he knew he was playing against a very experienced and talented West Virginia team. But he said his team was very loose and very relaxed coming into this ball game. And so West Virginia out there on defense. Pittsburgh now with the ball. They'll be looking at a first and ten, and they've burned a timeout, and they're getting set to send their offense back out of the field. Don Nealon is talking things over with William McDonald. These two teams have fought pretty much as we had expected them to. Both are averaging 50 and 54 points, respectively, with West Virginia, that higher number coming into the game, but you knew with the skill level of these two defensive units that they weren't going to put anything of that order on this afternoon. Well, the coaches have gotten to know the officials well enough. Let's get back into the ball game. <laughs> Dave Tanzos, our Apple Computer Student Athlete of the Week, is back into the ball game now for Pitt. And we're just underway here in the second half. Back to action. As Darnell Dickerson brings him to the line, sends Tanzos into a wing to the right. Out of the eye, Crossman and Walker there. This is Walker on the pitch. Walker into the hole on the right side. Tackled by Mike Fox as he gets over the 35 down to the 38. That time Pitt came with an extra tight end, Tatsos, who came in the game and played at wing back, so they had an unbalanced formation. They had an extra man to the right side of the, the formation, and they ran in that direction, just trying to mix up perhaps the alignment of the West Virginia defense. And we often forget the chess game that these coaches play against each other. That's part of it. Second down and eight out of the eye. Pittsburgh with the ball. Darnell Dickerson on the long count will keep it on the option. Tucks it up. Turnbull's got him once. Chris Parker is a man who finally puts him down as he sneaks up over the 40-yard line to the 42, a gain of about two. Coming into this game, they said they run a little bit of option. They did not run it very well this time because they stretched it out, and Darnell Dickerson really didn't threaten the corner, and Ronaldo Turnbull, 87, just played his position, stretched it out, it never gave him a chance to turn it inside or pitch it on the corner. He can't play it any better, and because of that, Pittsburgh's looking at a third and five. There he is, Turnbull. We've called his name a lot over the last couple of weeks. He's an outstanding athlete. Pitt is two for eight on third down conversions. Looking at third and five from their own 41. One lone setback, and Dickerson has the shovel pass ahead to his man, Ronald Redmond. It's free, and it's going to be an incompleted forward pass, as we've seen once before this afternoon. Because there was so much pressure, the people coming in and penetrating, he never had a chance to get the shovel pass off. West Virginia just came after him on third and five and took the chance, and forcing him again to punt. Watch this. Watch the pressure right in his face, right here, that forced that, that he never had a chance. Excellent play by Parker, big number 94, who's covering the receiver. More drama again as Van Horn's into punt. He gets over a line, a low line drive that Bell will field at the 23. Up to the 30 and driven out of bounds at the 31 yard line. Again, not much of a return. No points for artistic quality on the kick, but it got the job done. 37 yard punt. 12.51 left to go in the third quarter of play. West Virginia 10 and Pittsburgh 7. Welcome back. Great American Independent Football back here once again. The announcers for this game are selected and compensated by Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions. This broadcast is a copyright presentation. Any use of this broadcast without the express permission of West Virginia University or the University of Pittsburgh is prohibited. West Virginia has the ball first and 10 at their own 31. And carrying the ball is A.B. Brown out over the 35-yard line. Tom Sims looks like Jerry Osavsky in on the stuff. We were waiting for them to come right after you. That's what they did against Maryland very effectively last week when they got behind. I wouldn't be a bit surprised that that's what they'll do in this half. Try to run the ball straight ahead, try to make some first downs, get their offense going, get away from looking for the big play. That's what they did against Maryland. They just put the two tight ends in there, and they just ran the ball up the field. Let's see what happens. Brown and Taylor. In the setback spots now. And second down, and we've got flags all over the place. Carnell Smith jumps, but did, did Smider draw him? Let's see who he did. 
Smider's been alternating with Milton Redwine at that right offensive tackle this afternoon. Smider's a big one. Close to 300 pounds, 297, but he jumped. Can you hear me? And that's the kind of mistake they don't need. They had a good second down situation, second and three. Now they push the ball back at second down and eight. And stay away from those obvious play call situations. The penalty puts West Virginia into one of those right now. That's their seventh penalty, 55 yards. Second and eight from the 33. Harris wants his man right over the middle, and that's his tight end, Keith Wynn, and he hits him for about a four-yard gain. Not much on a low pass. Riddick is there on the tackle. You know what happened here before? We had a delay a game because Pitt, as we look at the press box, that's the Pitt coaches, the assistants up there, they lost communication with the sideline because they lost their phones. The officials called timeout and went over and told West Virginia they couldn't use their phones. But that was all been rectified. Everybody's talking to everybody, and we're going on with the game. Third down for West Virginia. They've got it at their own 38-yard line. They lead 10-7. That's Taylor across the formation. Harris the throw. He's got Bell wide open at the 46. Alonzo Hampton covering and knocks him out of bounds. It's good for the first down for West Virginia. And Hampton gave him much too much room. Playing zone coverage, he gave number one Prentice Bell far too much room. As you see, Harris coming out on a sprint. He really delivers the ball with authority, but watch how far back number three Hampton is. By the time he comes up on it, it's a first down. Much too much, much too soft by Hampton, the cornerback. Eight-yard gain for Grandis Bell, his first pass reception of the day. First and 10, West Virginia at their own 45. Split backs and Harris rolling to his left. Big rush on, gets away from one man. And it's tackled by Carnell Smith at the 33. Sims put the original rush on. The play was made by Sims, the defensive tackle out of Detroit, Michigan, a transfer from Western Michigan. Watch number 89 come in. He makes the play here as Harris gets away from him. There is standing number 91, Carnell Smith, the outside linebacker, coming in from the backside. Sims, 6'4", 265, came to Pittsburgh from Western Michigan. Loss of 11 on the play brings down second and 19. Rembert in motion to the bottom. Draw play straight ahead. Big yardage for A.B. Brown. A clear zone to the end zone. He's going all the way. 65 yards downfield for a West Virginia score. On second and 19. Coaches dream about this kind of a call. You catch them second and 19, figuring you're going to throw the football. They're going to come after you. There's some gaps in the offensive, the defensive line. They found it. And watch, they run this play, and they run it to perfection. And of course, it turns out to be a key touchdown. The Here transfer comes. from Pittsburgh, A.B. Anthony Brown. Here's Bauman for the kick and the point after. It is up, and it is good. And West Virginia leads 17 7. Let's see the play again. Here it is. They're coming after the linebackers are blitzing to the outside. The tackles are pinching inside. A great job of blocking in the offensive line. And there it is. There's no safety to be found. Everybody's locked on somebody else. It's a perfect call. A.B. Brown. A.B. Brown for 65 yards and a score. And West Virginia moves out by 10. They lead it 17 7. We'll be back after this from your local stations. Steve Martin along with Bob Cassiola and Stan Saverin here at Pitt Stadium where the West Virginia Mountaineers have taken a 17-7 lead over the Pitt Panthers in this battle between two great American independents. Pittsburgh getting set to receive the kick of Brad Carroll who's handling the kickoff duties today instead of Charlie Bauman. That change on the special team for West Virginia, but the draw play uh, for A.B. Anthony Brown has him still buzzing 64 yards downfield at the 10 23 mark in the third period. They give West Virginia their 10 point lead. Deep McCray and Hadley now for Pittsburgh. Here's the kick. It's coming to Hadley at the four. Hadley over the 20. He's drilled and brought down by West Virginia's number 39, Kevin Burroughs. A 19-yard return on the play. 
Here we go with the replay of the touchdown by A.B. Brown. See number 43 right there, the, the third man in and on the screen in blue. He's the free safety. He's Troy Washington. He's blitzing. It's a safety blitz. And because he's blitzing, there's nobody in center field. And that's why A.B. Brown had a chance to go all the way on that play for a touchdown. Great camera work. First and 10 coming up for Pittsburgh. They're at their own 22-yard line. Dardell Dickerson's going to throw. Has some time looking over the middle for Tootin. Is it complete? Yes, at the 39-yard line. Willie Edwards covering on the play with Al Boyd Mays. And Pittsburgh continues to throw on the early downs. First and 10, they've really gone to the pass, particularly the drop-back pass as Darnell Dickerson sets up Tootin on the right of the screen. 81 is going to come in and break over the middle deep beyond the linebackers, and he makes a nice play there and another first down. Tootin has good moves. They're afraid of him going deep. They're giving him that shorter intermediate pass. 16-yard gain. Walker and Redmond, the setbacks now for Pitt. Osborne coming across a formation. And this is going to be Walker carrying people over the 40-yard line to the 43. Plenty of time, and Mike Gottfried wants to get first downs and move that football and get field position, come away with points. They only trail by 10. There's plenty of time left in the third period, well over nine and a half minutes. That was Redmond on the last carry. Jim Gray comes in to make the tackle. Mike Godfrey pacing the sidelines. Sees his team down by 10. Third year here at Pitt. 15-9-1 is record. Had some great victories under him in just two years. Second down and six. And off Walker. Walker falls ahead of the 45. Tripped up there by Parker. Theron Ellis comes back to finish it off. Chris Parker, the senior defensive tackle from Whitehall, Pennsylvania, playing very tough. He's the leader of the defensive line for West Virginia. He penetrates that line of scrimmage. He, he's done a good job working against Ricketts and Matos, the big offensive tackles for Pitt. There you see Theron Ellis and Chris Herring. Lonnie Brockman there trying to whip up the West Virginia end of the crowd. Big third down coming. West Virginia 17-7 over Pittsburgh. The Panthers right now looking at third and three. Dickerson to throw. Has a man open. Tootin complete at the 47-yard line. Good for the first down. Tootin that time again coming from the inside position. The ball was thrown low, but he, uh, he hung on to it. Got the first down. That's been the combination today. Dickerson and Tootin as you watch from behind in the end zone as he delivers the football here to Tootin. Good catch. Oh, he's down. been active today, Bob. Seven catches, 105 yards, and a touchdown. And they Baron, him out. Looks like maybe he's got a little cramp in his leg. And they've got Baron Jackson in there at the wide receiver spot now, at the flanker spot for Baton Rouge, Louisiana. We'll talk about him. He's, an, he's a great prospect. That's him in motion right across the formation now on first down. Draw play, or delay actually, it goes to Walker. From over the 45 down to about the 43 yard line. Lots of people made the play, but the, the free safety, Daryl Whitmore, came up to make the hit to keep it from breaking. But it's awfully tough to run that delay action, that counter action against West Virginia. As you look at their defensive coordinator, Bob Shaw, Bob Shaw making the calls right there because uh, they are so quick. They react very well to the football. Good defensive ball club, and they've shown it here in the first couple of games. West Virginia, ninth in pass defense, 13th according to NCAA stats in total defense. 55,978 on the look at nearly capacity here at Pitt Stadium to see West Virginia and Pitt. Second down play. Dickerson carrying it like a loaf of bread out there at the 40 yard line he was brought down shy of the first down after a gain of three. This is this is a counter option and he takes a chance. He, he just hesitates a little longer. Watch how he, he keeps this ball out. He decides to tuck it up inside. He ought to tuck that ball with him. His pitch man trailing the play was Ronald Redmond number 22 if he wanted him but he kept the ball. It's third and three. We want to make first downs here. They're putting a couple of tight ends into the ball game. They've got Tootin out. Last time they did this, they came unbalanced. This time they go two tight ends, tight formation. Split to the top is Reggie Williams. Out of the eye. Third down. This is Redmond. 
Ledman over the 40 down to the 38 yard line and he's got the first down. Good call running up behind Mark Stepnoski, the right guard and Roman Matus the right tackle. Stepnoski of course is uh, all American. Let's see the hole. Watch on the right side. The right guard makes the hit makes the block 77 pins his man on the ground. Stepnoski we talked about him earlier. His coaches feel he's as fine an offensive lineman as there is in the country. Could be a high draft choice an all American Outland uh, Lombardi trophy possibility. And they are close enough to measure so they're going to bring the chain gang out and take a look at just how close this is. He had assumed that uh, Walker had enough yardage for the first or Redmond rather. Let's see what it's going to be. They've got it. There you see the distance that they. The one got. thing we haven't seen today, we haven't seen Darnell Dickerson take the ball and sprint on the corner. That's where he made his yardage against the highest state and in the opening game. He really hasn't done that. We may see that in the clutch situation because he's got the speed to get on the corner. It could be that they're concerned about getting outside the defensive or the outside linebackers for West Virginia because they've got great pursuit and speed. Redmond and Crossman are the backfield right now for Pittsburgh. First and ten at the West Virginia 38. Here is the end around, and it's going to be a pass option by Osborne looking for his man. It was for Tootin, and he was interfered with by May. not the first time they've tried that play. Right, this is beautifully executed in a way. He gives the ball back here to Osborne, his split receiver. He pulls up. There's pressure right there from Turnbull, but he gets the ball off. He underthrows it. But as the receiver tries to come back, Alvoid Mays just wraps himself around it. It was an obvious call. It was a tough break, but it's a great opportunity for Pittsburgh. There it is. And there's Mays. He just runs into him. He, by the time he found the ball, he interfered with him. Ball is marked down to the 22 yard line. It's going to be a first down for Pittsburgh. That's not the first time that Bill Osborne has thrown that. Two years ago, he threw it for a touchdown to Vernon Kirk in this very same rivalry. This has been the most consistent drive we've seen Pitt on all day. They've mixed their plays with the passing and the running game inside. They've hit Tootin in the intermediate zone. They've got a chance here. A score will bring him right back, and this will make it an interesting second half. You saw the penalty statistic. That has really hurt West Virginia today, but they have the lead by 10. Here's Dickerson to throw. Scrambling. Has a man open. Osborne overthrows him. First down, they go to the pass again. That time, the pressure forced Dickerson out of the pocket, and he does not throw as well on the run as he does from the pocket, and he just lofted that ball out of bounds. Good job by the defense of West Virginia, both in the line and in the secondary. And it's important now. Pittsburgh, of course, uh, trying to get back into this thing. They're just 10 points down, 539 left. You know, you look at time of possession, all the statistics point to Pittsburgh, but of course, West Virginia has had the big plays, that 64 yard play. Uh, that went for the touchdown right now. Pitt trying to move this drive into its ninth play. It started at the 23 yard line. Dickerson scrambling, going for his life there. Wanted to throw to Walker. He's put down by Turnbull. He was looking to he was looking to come off and throw a screen back to Adam Walker, number 29. But the pressure by Turnbull makes the play. Watch this. See the fake to 29. He's going to come back to him. He's going to set up on a screen action. It's a bootleg. But there is Turnbull, the ever-present Ronaldo Turnbull, who has really put two games back to back that we've seen. He's outstanding. His speed, his size, he creates problems from a defensive outside linebacker position. Eight tackles against Maryland last week. He's had several major influences on this game. We look at third down. West Virginia leading Pitt by 10. Pitt looking at third down in West Virginia territory. Dickerson to throw. Flag on the play. Throw to the flats complete to Crossman at the 18 yard line. But let's see what the flag is going to be as Mays made the stop. That time he just slipped the fullback. Crossman out into the flat, got him underneath the coverage. Looks like Pitt was moving. But there could have been some movement before the play. It looks that way. And they're saying, no, we don't want to take it. Let's force him into a fourth down situation. And that means that Mike Godfrey's got to think about either going for it on fourth and ten or trying a field goal. Well, there's still plenty of time here in the third quarter. But it is taking them a while to make the decision. It's taking the officials a while to tell us what the decision is here. 
Motion penalty declined by West Virginia as William McDonald came out. Illegal the motion, ball. offense declined. It is declined to bring fourth up fourth down. down, and Scott Kaplan is coming out to kick the field goal. Kaplan's boot will be his first ever in a field goal situation for Pittsburgh. And he'll kick it from the 25. It'll be a 35-yard field goal. Kaplan, just a freshman from Coral Springs, Florida. Van Horn, the regular kicker, one having a tough day and two having to handle the punts. Bill Osborne is the holder. There's the kick by the freshman. It is up and it is good. So Kaplan finds a way to start his career off with a 35-yard field goal kick to make it West Virginia 17 and uh. pit 10 with 5.04 left to go in the third quarter of this backyard brawl from Pittsburgh. West Virginia 17 to 10. Scott Kaplan, the field goal from 35 yards out. Let's look at it. And watch Scott Kaplan after he kicks this. Number nine, first time he tries, first time he kicks. Look at this action. The old cabbage patch movement here. You think he won the Sugar Bowl or something? His music video is due out soon. 5.04 left to go in the third quarter, and Kaplan's kick puts us at this juncture with West Virginia leading by a score of 17 to 10. Kaplan will get set to kick off once more. Eugene Napoleon is deep for West Virginia. Andre Johnson is there with him with A.B. Brown, who's seeing some kickoff return duty today for West Virginia. Out of 55,000 plus stands and waits for this one to continue. There's the kick. A good one by Kaplan. And taking it down in the end zone. Wisely, Eugene Napoleon. He wanted to run it out, but he's not going to get the opportunity. An injury report from the sideline, Stan Sabra. Thank you, Steve. The carnage continues for the pit defense. Burt Grossman is not playing. Mark Spindler out for the rest of the game with a hip pointer. Now, starting outside linebacker, freshman Ricardo McDonald is out for the rest of the game. He's got a very bad ankle sprain. He's all wrapped up. He's through for the rest of the day. Steve? Thank you, Stan. That's a tough injury. With McDonald out, that means they're going to have to come with Prentice Wright. A sophomore at that uh, linebacker position. He's very aggressive, but he's not a big guy at 5'10, 205. We'll see how that develops. First and 10, West Virginia. Here's the pitch, and it's going to go to Brown. A.B. Brown out to the 23 yard line. Not much gain on the play. Tackled by Curtis Bray at that outside linebacker spot. Curtis Bray, the freshman out of Monroeville, Pennsylvania. Tremendous prospect right there, number 58, the top scholastic player in the country last year. They think he's got superstar quality, and he's got all the physical attributes at 6'4", 220. Nice day for A.B. Brown so far. 15 carries, 109 yards, and a touchdown. Playing against the school that he began his college career at. Here's Harris on second down, scrambling out over the 30-yard line to the 43. Driven out of bounds there by Washington at the 42 yard line. Nice gain on the play of 21 by Major Harris. And that was the option and he elected. He saw the chance to turn it up inside. And when you think how he can run at 215 pounds, watch him avoid the tackle and turn it up here. Great athlete, great acceleration. What a threat, wow. West Virginia first and 10. Split twins to the bottom, lined up otherwise in the eye. Here's Harris going away from the split. At the 45, at the 50, and into Pittsburgh territory, brought down by Olsavsky at the 47. And that's the problem. They're asking the linebacker to pick up on the quarterback there, and Olsavsky, as good as he is and as much as he hustles, he just doesn't have the speed to be there when Harris turns it upfield, and it's another first down. Oh, you look and at now, the excuse me, St Steve, now West Virginia's doing what they do best. They're getting the ball in the hands of their quarterback, and he's either optioning and keeping it himself or looking to pitch it. First and 10 in pit territory at the 47. Harris gives to the first man through the fullback, Craig Taylor. And Taylor carries bodies to the 40 down to the 39. And now with the injuries to the pit defense, particularly their defensive line with Spindler, Grossman, McDonald at linebacker, you're starting to see those big offensive people take control and they can do it. We saw them dominate Maryland in the second half last week. 3.39 on the clock rolling Testing, in the third Testing. period. West Virginia leading 17 to 10, and they're moving, and moving quickly. Second down and three. 
Taylor gets the call again. Diving for the first down, he's going to be close. Riddick comes up from the free safety spot to make the stop, as well as Tom Sims. This is a key stretch for the Mountaineers. They came into this season. A lot of people expected a lot of them. They're a veteran team. And uh, this is a key drive, I'd have to think, for West Virginia. Well, we talked about who the game was most key to, and a key, of course, to both teams. But West Virginia has a lot to prove this season. They really feel they've got a ball club, and this is the big game for them this season. And measuring for the first down, it's going to be close. I think they're going to be shy. Major Harris's indication to his sideline is six inches or less. William McDonald brings the chain back to the center of the field. That's where we'll start as Calvin Phillips heads to the sideline now for West Virginia. But the Mountaineers wearing them down. A team with a 17 to 10 lead right now. Let's take a look at a couple of scores from around the country. Duke bidding for their fourth straight win, 31-14 over Virginia. That's a surprise. Rutgers hanging on in the second quarter, playing tough defense against Penn State. Some tough games this year. They upset Michigan State. They were a mild upset, I guess, but Vanderbilt beat them at home. Although I'd have to say those two teams evenly matched. Third down. Here's the call. Taylor straight ahead. Got it this time. No Ta need to measure. Taylor running up over his centers. Kevin Koken. Koken the senior from Youngstown. That's quite a quite a matchup. Koken is from Youngstown, Ohio, playing center. The middle linebacker for Pitt is Jerry Olsowski. He's from Youngstown. They went to different high schools, but uh, they knew each other. They played at about the same time as you see Olsowski. Let's look at Koken. And Koken gets a chance to meet Riddick and several other people as he goes out there on the block. Second down coming up. First and ten, rather. Here's Harris. Harris in trouble. Throws it as he goes down. It's going to be incomplete. Very close. Very close. Was his knee on the ground? Whether they let that go as an incompleted pass. Curtis Bray gets in there and gives him all kinds of heat. That's a great job by the Pitt defense. They kept off a play fake. Major Harris coming up first and ten. Went with the pass. They contained him. Covered his receivers well. And forced him to second and ten. As you saw, 5 for 11 on the afternoon. Second down and 10 coming up. Seventh play of the drive. West Virginia started this one on their own 20. Here's Brown. Brown trying to go up inside, and Allen throws him down along with Prentice Wright. Up over the 34 yard line. We Not much game. We talked about Prentice Wright coming in at that linebacker position for McDonald. He's not big, but he is ferocious, and he's a hitter. There he is, number seven. He made the hit that time on Brown, kept it to a yard gain, forcing Major Harris to a third and nine. They've got to keep it going. The ball sitting on the 33-yard line of Pittsburgh. 2.15 left to go on the third. West Virginia 17-10 over Pittsburgh. Calvin Phillips to the top of your screen. Rembert to the bottom. Rembert's going to go in motion. Oh. All kinds of movement. It looked like it was Canadian football there for a moment as Taylor was not set as All he went to the All kinds line. of problems as the, they had the wrong formation with Rembert. The tailback was in the wrong place. It's going to cost him. That's our ninth penalty of the afternoon. They've already, uh, yeah, that is their ninth penalty. You'd better off taking a timeout right there. Taylor came up. Of course, uh, Canadian football, you don't have to be set. To be in motion and the play can go. That's this important drive. They trail only by 10 points, Pittsburgh. If they can hold them here and get the football back. When West Virginia started to mount a really good offensive drive this time, very important to them. They're playing with a lot of new faces in there on defense because of injuries, Pittsburgh. And they're getting the effort out of Prentice Wright. Tom Sims at tackle. Jamie Lamont to the top of your screen. That's Taylor in motion on third down. Harris to the top side as well. Stops, pumps, fires to the sideline, out of bounds, incomplete. That was intended for Lamont, but he stretched it out too far. The pit defense put too much pressure, and by the time Major Harris wanted to get upfield, he had too much coverage. Watch this. He comes out, it's a sprint left. He has to pull the ball down because Osowski's in his face, and by the time he delivers it, it's too late. The coverage is there, the ball is out of bounds, and West Virginia, which what on a drive that looked very promising is now forced to punt the ball back. And Pittsburgh going with two deep backs as Carrion gets the kick away. Fair catch called for by Hampton. 
And he catches it at the 10. A nice punt by Carrion, who didn't have much punting room down there deep. And he gets Pittsburgh deep down in their own territory. It's West Virginia by seven. We'll be back after this from your local station. Welcome back to Pitt Stadium. Steve Martin here along with Bob Cassiola. And there you see Larry Wonky. He is warming up, backup quarterback for Pittsburgh. Darnell Dickerson, we understand, got poked in the eye. And, uh, but he's back into the ball game. But Wonky is on reserve in case needed. Pitt at their own 10-yard line. After their defense held, following the punt by Carrion of about 28 yards, that pinned them in at the 10-yard line. Key defensive series, Bob, for the Pitt defense. They held on a drive that I feel they had to hold on. Yeah, there was every possibility for them to give up another score, which would made it much more comfortable for West Virginia, but they held. West Virginia made some mistakes in penalties, and now they got the ball 90 yards away from the end zone, but they have the ball, and they're only 10, seven points down. Here's Dickerson to throw. Steps inside the rush and fires. It is incomplete. One at Osborne. Bo Orlando and Daryl Whitmore were covering on the play that time. Again, coming up on first down, even they have, even though they have the ball on their own 10-yard line, he's going to throw the football. He had plenty of time, but it did work. From ground level, we see the offensive line blocking for him. Because it's first down, you're usually going to get just a normal type defense, no rush, no penetration, maybe no blitz. Consequently, it gives the quarterback a chance to throw. As Mike Gottfried looks on, you saw the battle between Dan and Tom Ricketts and Dale Jackson. Jackson coming back from an injury, didn't play last week against Maryland. Having a hard time finding his way back in the lineup with Turnbull playing so well. Second down, here's Dickerson. Hands off to Walker, spins out of a tackle. Out over the 10 yard line to about the 12. Parker in on the stop now for West Virginia. As usual, it's important here that Pittsburgh not give up the ball. Hold on to it, try and work for a first down, get themselves a little better field position. Number 49, Herring calling the signals. Outstanding, dependable linebacker for this tough West Virginia defense. They really flow to the football. Really no weaknesses. They've got a lot of experience up and down the defensive line, linebackers as well as in the secondary. Pitt trailing by seven, looking at third down and nine. There are three for ten on third down conversions, and here's Dickerson throwing. It is complete to Osborne. Depends on the mark. Looks like he's going to have the first down very close to it at the 21-yard line. Great pass. He just turns back to the football. The ball is delivered low as he's done all day. Watch this. Two deep backs. They've got a linebacker out there supporting underneath. He takes the wide receiver. Osborne turns back inside in front of the free safety. That time Whitmore and makes the catch first down. And they convert the third to first on the 21 yard line. Winding down play in the third quarter with 21 seconds left. They may not get it off in time. 14 seconds and the clock rolling. Long count. This will be the last play of the third. Dickerson back to throw. Dickerson looking. Big rush on and they sack him in the backfield. That's Theron Ellis. Great play by Ellis. You just can't expect anybody to protect you that long. He sat in there, he waited, he wanted to go deep. He was looking upfield again for Osborne, who was covered by Darrell Whitmore, the free safety. Here you see it. He's looking for Osborne. Too long. And there it is. Theron Ellis from Norristown, Pennsylvania, makes the play. West Virginia 17 to 10. Back with more in the fourth quarter of this backyard brawl. Welcome back. To Pitt Stadium, Steve Martin here along with Bob Cassiola and Stan Saverin as we bring you the action of these two great American independents. West Virginia ranked 11th coming in. They lead the 15th ranked Pittsburgh, 17 to 10. Fourth quarter coming in this 81st renewal. Very interesting football game, 17 10 the score. People expected a lot more as we look at Larry Wonky, the uh, sophomore quarterback from Cleveland, Ohio. He's played a lot of football here, played in the Blue Bonnet Bowl last year. When an injury came to Dickerson, he can throw the football. We may still see him later on in this fourth period. Right now, it's Darnell Dickerson looking at second down and 22 after the sack. He's back to throw. Not much time. Has to scramble. Fires incomplete. Intended for, looks like Baron Jackson downfield. Once again, the pressure on the quarterback, forcing him out of the pocket, and excellent coverage. 
in the secondary by Whitmore, Orlando, and Mays on the two wide receivers, Tootin and Osborne. Two three quarters of stats there, total yards. West Virginia now has surpassed, and their rushing yardage helped by that 64 yard rush by A.B. Brown, but they've been very, very consistent in their ground game here in the second half. And you look at those stats defensively for West Virginia, that's impressive. They've really contained Pittsburgh, and they've done a nice job of holding Darnell Dickerson from really the big play. Plus they've helped uh, Walker from getting a lot of yardage here today as well. Here's Dickerson on third down, steps up into the pocket and fires for Tootin overthrows him. Well thrown pass, Tootin was there, but he was covered. He was double teamed that time, the free safety Whitmore. As he's looking for Tootin to go deep, here's Tootin isolated. The cornerback 41 has him short, and you'll see the safety coming over in the middle. That's Preston Waters to double him on the backside. Here is it's Jeff Van Horn and more drama for Pittsburgh. He's kicked line drives galore, four punts, an average of 36 yards. Has not been able to get one up. Now he gets a fairly nice one out of there. Granis Bell at the 41. Bell heads for the sidelines and gets driven back from the 35-yard line. And it's a return of about six yards on the punt of 31. And a nice field position situation for the West Virginia Mountaineers. 14-39 left to go in the game. They lead Pittsburgh by seven. We'll be back after this word from your local stations. Steve Martin, Bob Cassiola, and Stan Saffron back at Pitt Stadium. It is 14-39 left to go in this fourth quarter. West Virginia has the ball, an excellent field position at the Pittsburgh 35. Major Harris handing off to Undra Johnson in his first carry of the day. Undra, good straight-ahead runner, gets inside the 30 to the 28-yard line. Undra Johnson came in a lot earlier last week against Maryland and ran the ball very effectively. They really come with a lot of backs at you, West Virginia, and Undra at 5'9", 200, has the power to run inside, and also there he showed he can get outside. They really can come after you with depth in every position, particularly in their running back situation. He picked up six yards, got the ball inside the 35 to 30-yard line. Second down and four. Rico Tyler is the fullback. Here's Johnson again on the pitch. Cuts inside as the first down, down to the 20. Lewis Riddick on the stop, but under Johnson, Mike Wallace, the running backs coach of West Virginia, tells me he will take the shortest distance that he can. He's a good straight-ahead runner. Excellent blocking up front, the whole right side of the line. It looked like a sweep to the right. Johnson looking to cut it back. He's a veteran. He knows where the sticks are. He knows he's got to get first downs. He's got another one. The ball's on the 20 yards away from a score here as West Virginia moves on the ground. Johnson's made 147 yards coming in, and this is Johnson again, headed for the end zone, touchdown! Andra Johnson from 20 yards out. The whole left side of the line blocked down and gave Johnson a chance to cut this thing all the way back. Nobody was there. Phillips, Stroya, Koken, great job on the left side of the line. And under Johnson makes it look easy. Don Nealon resting a little easier on that score as that gives the Mountaineers a 13-point lead pending Charlie Bauman's kick. Going to be his third point after touchdown of the day. Out of the hold of Chuck Levinas, it is good. 14.06 left to go. Let's look at that touchdown again. Here we go. It starts off to the right side. He follows his fullback up in there, but watch the cut. There's the blocks. Everybody got a block on the left side, and they cut back against the grain, and he knows how to find that end zone. Great effort by the offensive line, a group we've been talking about in the last two weeks because they're so impressive. Fourth touchdown, fifth touchdown of the year thus far for Andre Johnson. It's West Virginia by two touchdowns over Pittsburgh. There's the defense of Pitt sitting on the sidelines right now. They've given up a West Virginia touchdown. The Mountaineers have taken the lead by a score of 24 to 10. Brad Carroll getting set to kick off deep for Pittsburgh. It's going to be Lee McRae and also Michael Hadley. Story about McRae he thought he'd be in Seoul with the 4 by 100 relay team. Three time NCAA champion. He's not going to get a chance to return this one. This is Hadley. Hadley breaks inside. 
35, make it out to about the 33-yard line. Tim Newsom in on the stop for West Virginia. Let's get out of the sidelines, get a thought from Stan Saverin on why Pitt has been so ineffective offensively. Steve, I talked to wide receiver Billy Osborne, number 12, and he said that West Virginia has not shown any different coverages that they have all year long. It's nothing that they have not seen on film. The standard cover two, cover three, some man-to-man. -man. Osborne says he recognizes the defense. He credits the West Virginia rush for destroying the, the timing on the patterns, and he credits that for the reason they're not being able to move the ball, but it is nothing that West Virginia has done differently so far. Here is Ron Redmond getting the call on first and ten, and he is immediately set down in a hurry by Theron Ellis, who's having himself one heck of a football game. When you look at uh, this last scoring drive, they got good field position, West Virginia, through the punt, and in three plays, Undra Johnson carried it in from 20 yards out. In three plays, they went in with the score. But getting back to Stan's comments, that's exactly what's happened. They came into this football game knowing they had experience and depth. They're playing their kind of a game, and they're just relying on their talent, the athletic ability, and their experience, and they're moving to the football. They've done an excellent job up front with their down people, the linebackers, and particularly their experienced secondary. They moved a linebacker, a fullback, and Frostman, and put in an extra wide receiver. On second down and seven, Dickerson back with time, looking over the middle for Osborne. He broke late. Incomplete. Lockwood covering him on the play. He broke late, and uh, Dickerson threw the ball up and really short-handed uh, short the football. It's, uh, it fell very short here. He's got plenty of time as he sits back in here, and he's looking for Osborne from the right of the screen to come open deep. But the ball is short. Look at all the white jerseys around the receiver. They're playing it well. They're looking for the pass. They know they can place in the secondary because they're up front people and their linebackers are controlling the line of scrimmage and the running game. Dickerson's come up empty on his last four passes. West Virginia now with wholesale substitutions. This is their pass rush defense on third and eight. And their nickelback, their fifth defensive back into the ball game. Here comes Dickerson, steps up, fires, intended for his fullback cross minutes incomplete. And he took a hard hit after he delivered the ball. He took a hard hit from Pickett coming from the outside linebacker position. And they're going to force him to punt the ball again. That time his fullback was open, but when he got hit, he threw the he elevated the ball too far. What? Lots of pressure on that young man today, and it's come from the West Virginia defense. Let's watch West Virginia now. As we've got a new kicker. Yusef Washington is going to be the new punter now, replacing Jeff Van Horn. Brannis Bell deep. Here's Washington with a boot. Bell calls for the fair catch at the 37 yard line. So West Virginia will get the football back comfortably in front with 1254 left to go in the football game. 24 to 10 West Virginia over Pittsburgh. We're back after this from your local station. Welcome back to Pitt Stadium and there you see Darnell Dickerson. Could this be the last that we've seen of him this afternoon? Could there be a change of command when Pitt gets the ball back? Well, Wonky's warm up suggests that that might be the case. But right now the Pitt defense is out there on the field. They're banged up and they're facing a West Virginia offense that has it all together. Here comes Johnson trying to turn the corner and this time he has stopped Holloway initially pulled him down and he had help from Osowski. West for the uh... West Virginia offense trying to run the ball, take some time off the clock now. Good play by Holloway, but you look at this, and there it is. There's the rushing game and the balance they have. We talked about it. Two tailbacks running the football, Brown and Johnson. Harris, of course, the quarterback, and Taylor, the fullback. When you look at that distribution, that's why they're so effective. Brown game that averages 313 normally, and against a pretty good pit defense, albeit injured, they've done well today. Second down and 15, draw play. And a flag thrown into the fray as Johnson goes up over the 30 yard line to about the 32. This could be a hold. We got to talk about the injuries to Pitt. They didn't expect it. Grossman, of course, is a terrific loss as we watch the hold call here against West Virginia. Grossman, a defensive end, did not play today. They lost their young linebacker, but a good one in McDonald. And also Spindler. Mark Spindler went out with a hit pointer early. Uh, he did not come back in. The and there's offense, three starters out of their defense against a very, down. very effective offensive team with West Virginia, and it's got to hurt him. Penalty apparently is going to be declined by Pitt. Force him into a third down, third down and 14. Taylor and Johnson are the setbacks for Major Harris. 
West Virginia leading 24 to 10, 11.58 left to go in the football game. Harris to throw. Rush on by Osowski and he gets it. Osowski and Curtis Bray in on the stop, the two linebackers coming in and making a sandwich of Major Harris. Osowski makes the play. There he is, number 55, senior out of Youngstown. The coach on the field. Watch this as Osowski comes around on the right side. You'll see him appear right there, number 55. He squeezes it. Bray comes up the middle. They take a gamble, put pressure on the quarterback, throw Harris for a loss, force West Virginia to punt. Lance Carrion with the kick. Alonzo Hampton getting away from it as it takes a Pittsburgh bounce and rolls out of bounds at the 36-yard line. And let's see who comes out into the ball game. It looks like it's going to be Larry Wonky. Number eight, Larry Wonky headed into the ball game. A much different look than Darnell Dickerson. He's a drop back passer, and he will throw the football here. He's come in, comes into this game. He's tried seven. He's completed four for 62 yards. He's had one interception, but he was outstanding this spring. Dickerson was not in the spring. He was the most valuable player in the spring. He played in the blue bonnet ball where he played outstandingly. So Larry Wonky is a fine passer, a fine quarterback. Out of the eye formation on first and ten. The first play is to Walker. Walker cuts up inside and gets nearly five yards. Stopped first by Whitmore. He falls to the 40-yard line after a four-yard gain. West Virginia's done an excellent job of containing Adam Walker today. He's had some great days so far this year, but their defense pursuing has done an excellent job against him. Kervin Richards comes into the ball game in place of Walker in the backfield, suggesting the throw on second down. Walker coming into this game at 327 yards rushing, 122 against Ohio State last week. Second down. Lone setback. This could be Wonky's first pass of the day. Wonky to throw. Has a man open. That's Osborne. It's nearly picked off, is it? Yes, it is. Bo Orlando. He got a foot down inbounds before he stepped out. A great play by Bo Orlando. We have talked about the athletic ability of this kid. He was a former free safety. He knows how to go to the football, and that's him. Watch him fly. This is quite a pass, but it's it's up in the air too long. It gives Orlando a chance to adjust. The quarterback is there on the receiver, and there comes Orlando inside out. Great interception. Oh, wow, what a play. Nice camera work, too, as you look at Paul Orlando will return one for some 50 yards against Maryland for a score. And this time, this one gives West Virginia the possession at their own 40 yard line, first and 10 with 10 and a half left. Johnson gets the pitch. Straight ahead over the 40 yard line up to about the 43. Osowski and also Sims on the stop now for Pittsburgh. West Virginia looking to take some time off the clock now, up by two touchdowns, 24 to 10. They got Andre Johnson back in the ballgame. He's fresh. He hasn't played until about the last series, so he's ready to go. They have another tailback beyond that they could use, and Eugene Napoleon. So it's going to be second down and seven. The 43 of West Virginia. Harris gives to Johnson. Johnson straight ahead over the 45 yard line out to the 48 yard line. Let's get down to the sidelines and our reporter down there is Stan Savron. Thank you Steve. After West Virginia scored the touchdown to go ahead 24 to 10. Several of the West Virginia players behind the bench were saying let's rub it in. Let's finish him off. And of all people Bo Orlando stands up and said wait a minute. There's a long way to go before this game is over. Remember what happened to us last year when we lost late. We got to keep going till the final gun. Sure enough next series Bo Orlando comes up with an interception. That's called senior leadership. Steve. Third down coming up now for West Virginia. The pitch to Johnson on the corner. Looks like he's going to be short. Lewis Riddick comes up to make the stop with Troy Washington. Big play for the defense that time. They held him on the option. He forced the quarterback, Harris, to pitch it. And number five, sophomore Lewis Riddick, who played fullback last year for Pitt, moved back to defense and starting at uh, strong safety. He made up and made the, made the hit. And they're forcing West Virginia to punt the football. And Carrion will do the honors. You've seen what he's done today. 43-yard average. He gets off a nice one. It'll go inside the 10, but it rolls into the end zone. Lance Carrion 
So it'll be West Virginia going back to defense and Pitt coming back out to the 20 yard line as you see Lance Carrion go to the sideline. Let's take a look around the map of college football on this busy Saturday afternoon. They're having a Donnybrook and Durham well, as Duke. Duke can score. They've got a great passing offense with Steve Spurrier and they're making points and they got well ahead of Virginia early and now they're holding on 38 21. You know they were picked for last in the ACC this year. Notre Dame three touchdowns better than Purdue. There's one. That's a big message sent by South Carolina. They said all week we are supposed to be in the top 10 and we're going to prove it this week. Still second quarter. Rutgers 7 3 over Penn State. Our score West Virginia 24 Pittsburgh 10 and this is going to be Kervin Richards who carries out over the 20 yard line of the 24. Kervin Richards the freshman out of LaPorte Texas came into this ball game with a 6.5 rushing average and one touchdown has not been used today. He's back in the ball game. He's quick 5'10, 190 pounds. There he is another one of the outstanding freshmen that Mike Gottfried has recruited here at Pittsburgh. He was tackled by Theron Ellis. We need to give a call to this young man who's had a great ball game today out of Norristown Pennsylvania. Inside linebacker was an outside linebacker and converted to the inside and has done very well. Second down and about fifth now about five. Wonky all kinds of pressure throws it to Kirk at the last second. Kirk up the sidelines driven out of bounds at the 43 by Daryl Whitmore. Wow what a play. <laughs> He's in the grasp of the defender and he just flips the ball out to Kirk who was a, not even an outlet. He was just sitting out here and here he comes. He drops back. Watch the pressure from the outside from Pickett. Pickett comes in. He's in the grasp of Orlando who's blitzing from the strong safety position and that's that's quick thinking and athletic ability. He just flipped it like an option to number 80 Vernon Kirk and the uh, big guy from Denora Pennsylvania got the first down 17 yard gain Redmond and Crossman the setbacks for Larry Wonky now at the 42 Wonky falls away from center. Here's Redmond trying the corner but Orlando says uh uh at the 42 he drives him out of bounds. We got a flag on the field that was not intended to break outside. He wanted to go back inside with a play. He never got a chance to cut it. But again Bo Orlando was there to make the hit. William McDonald the referee going to make the call. It's a hold against Pitt. Tough call against Pitt but watch on the top of the screen watch 22 Orlando come right up on the line of scrimmage. This guy loves the, he really enjoys playing the game. Look at him number 22 plays off the block of the wide receiver Reggie Williams not much of a block and gets out there and makes the hit. But Orlando's everywhere. He's a Holy defensive way. back. He's Bring almost a linebacker. He Penley. can run. He can intercept. First down. He's really a terrific football player. And they enjoy him. Here's the latest on that Rutgers score. Rutgers leading Penn State 14 to 10. They're in the third at University Park. Rutgers has been able to move the football this year on people. Their problem has been stopping them, and especially last week against uh, Vanderbilt. But uh, they're playing tough up at State College, and that's not an easy place to play. First down and 20 to go. Redmond alone setback. Wonky to throw with time. It's deflected. Looked like Scott Summits, I think, got a hand on it. Maybe premature with that call, but Summits has played a great game so far today. He may have got a hand on Larry Wonky's pass intended out in the flats for Boyer. Scott Summits came in. He got an award last week, as you mentioned. Watch this play. Wonky has time. He waits a little too long, and these big guys, Summits at 6'3, gets up in his face. There he is, right there. And he gets up and he makes the play. That's a great effort. Played off the block. Summits was voted the defensive hustler last week against Maryland. That meant he led in tackles. He had eight of them, two sacks, and the senior really has come on in the last two weeks and is playing very well at the nose guard position. Second and 20 for Larry Wonky and the Pitt Panthers. And off to the fullback. That's going to be Kervin Richards. Richards trying the outside, and he can't get there either. And it is Pat Marlatt from Princeton, New Jersey, from West Virginia, who gets it. Marlatt comes in. He's the, the, the backup at that position for Parker, but he can move. There he is. Big number 95. You can't do it any better than that. Say he's a very emotional player, very intense, and very big. 251, 65, but he can move. Third down coming up for Pitt. There are two touchdowns back and the clock is running. 6.43 left to go in the football game. West Virginia 
Redmond, the lone setback for Wonky. West Virginia with their nickel package in defensively, six defensive backs. Wonky to throw over the middle. It is complete to Reggie Williams, and he is brought down immediately at the 38-yard line, well shy of the first down, and the tackle is made on the play by Joe Oyuso. Williams did a good job. The ball was a little bit behind him. He caught it. Had he gotten up field a little bit, he had a chance to make more yardage, but it's the fourth down situation. Again, West Virginia's defense coming alive here in the second half and really has shut off Pitt to where, you know, they're just outstanding, and they're, it's hard for Pitt to move the football now knowing they have to throw it, put it now. in the air. Nalen's looking to get a timeout here. Well, fourth down, and Pitt is going for it with 5.57 left, and now Don Nalen feels he's got a He's got the wrong people out. in the game. That's why. He's probably anticipating that they were going to punt the football, so he's got to get his substitutes changed around. So there's timeout on the field. 5.47 left to go on the football game. It's West Virginia 24 and Pittsburgh 10. Welcome back, fourth quarter action. Steve Martin along with Bob Cassiola and Stan Saverin. We're at Pitt Stadium where the West Virginia Mountaineers have just called this place their home this afternoon, especially in the second half. They lead Pitt 24-10. They've taken over on defense in the second half, shut down the Pitt passing and running game. They've got them in a tough situation now, fourth and 14. It looks like Pitt is going to go for it, and uh, they're going to bring in. They brought in a nickel back. They've got an de extra defensive back into the game. and. Uh, they're just playing tough. David Lockwood, number 41, is the nickelback. They are fourth and 14 from their own 38-yard line. Williams in motion. Rushes on. Wonky's going to be buried. Ronaldo Turnbull on the tackle. Ronaldo Turnbull just ran around the block of Tom Ricketts. Tom Ricketts is regarded as one of the top offensive linemen in the country. And Turnbull, of course, he knows what's coming, just turns it on. Watch this from the right side of the screen, and he's right there. You'll see him appear, number 87. Big play after big play for this guy. As you watch, as that defensive line just tees off in the top of the screen, he just flies past Ricketts and West Virginia's got the ball inside the 30-yard line. It's Taylor and Brown, the setbacks for Harris. First and 10 for West Virginia. They go to Craig Taylor, and Taylor carries people with him inside the 20 down to the 17-yard line. The ball pops loose, but it'll be West Virginia ball. Troy Washington on the cap on the uh, tackle. Big offensive line just blowing him out of there now. West Virginia sees it. They came into this ball game knowing that a lot of people in the country had their eyes focused on this football team. Ranked 11th coming in. This has got to help them if they can continue with this score. 5-12 and the clock running. Nine-yard gain by Taylor brings up second and one. Handoff this time to Brown. He's got the first down inside the 15 to the 13. Nice carry by A.B. Anthony Brown. Quite a homecoming for Brown, who actually hails out of New Jersey, but started his college career at Pittsburgh, transferred to West Virginia, and, of course, Major Harris playing in front of the whole crowd today as well. Eugene Napoleon, the other tailback. We haven't seen him yet. He works on his specialty teams. He started his career here at Pittsburgh also. Brown, 17 carries, 114 yards, and a score. This is Taylor. Taylor at the 10. Impressive running to the 6. Big block inside by Smiter, the right tackle, and Kovac, the right guard. But more importantly, that's just a little, they slip the ball to the fullback as the tailback, as the quarterback turns, as if he's going to pitch it to the tailback. The linebackers flow out of there with the tailback, and they just slip the ball to the fullback. And the kind of fullbacks that West Virginia has in Taylor and Evans, you give them a little seam, they're going to make yardage. Second down, three to go, ball on the seven. Harris, first man through, Taylor, close to the first down. Now inside the three to the two-yard line, he's got it easily. They got all their seniors in there. They've got all their veterans up front and Koken at center and Stroy at left guard. And they're going into the end zone where most of the West Virginia fans are. So they're getting a little home crowd treatment down there. And they're alive on that West Virginia bench, too. Clock rolling. Four minutes left. West Virginia moving the ball in. 
Harris to Taylor again. He gets to the one. Osavsky wraps him up at the one yard line, a gain of two. West Virginia can sense it right now. Don Nealon sending the play. Well, his play's already cool, sent man. in. No mistakes on the ground. Nothing fancy. There it is. Look at that shot. Great. Right Not on far ground to go. level. You see how far they got to go. Watch this offense against the defense right in the trenches. Who will carry it this yard. It's Brown. Brown hit. Does he go in? Let's see if they mark him down. There's no call yet. No, no. He got really hit at the line of scrimmage. He got hit on the line of scrimmage. Good job by Cornell Holloway. The cornerback came up there and hit him just as he tried to jump and vault that line. Kept him short. And Mike Third. Godfrey knows. Can't get this football back. West Virginia's dominated the second half on him. Third down and less than a yard. 254. Left to go in the ball game. West Virginia 24-10 over Pittsburgh, and they're threatening to put another one on the board. Harris with the call. Taylor's in. Touchdown. Craig Taylor from Linden, New Jersey. Came in with 140 yards to his credit prior to this ball game, and the six foot, 250 pound senior. And look at Don Nealon. What do well, you think he's talking about? Well, what he's talking about, fellas, he said. He came in, he said earlier this morning before this game, he was really up for this one. He was tight as a drum, but he had a lot of confidence in his club, and they played well. They have. They have played well on both sides of the football, particularly in the second half. Charlie Bauman with a kick. That's his fourth of the day, and it is good. And the West Virginia Mountaineers prove they are indeed for real. The 11th ranked Mountaineers take a 31 to 10 lead over the Pitt Panthers with 241 left to go in the ball game. We're back after this from your local station. There you see the banner. This is the year held up by the West Virginia University fans, and this certainly looks like it is the year for Don Nealon and his staff. The Mountaineers have put a big win well, they've got a big lead right now, 31-10 over Pittsburgh with 2.41 left to go. A happy sideline, as you see. Their rushing game has gone for big yardage today. West Virginia going for 276 yards to Pitt 78. And look at this. South Carolina is beating Georgia 20 to 3. That may give West Virginia an opportunity to move up even further. They'll definitely break into the top 10 this week. They were 11th coming in. As we get set for the kick for Brad Carroll, Deep McRae and Hadley. There's the kick, it's a squiver. It'll be taken by an up back at the 36 yard line, and that's where it'll stop. Pittsburgh will get the ball back first and 10. There's Don Nalen, head coach, graduate of Bowling Green. He coached nine years as his alma mater, then went on to Michigan as an assistant coach, came to West Virginia nine years ago. He's got a, the winningest record in their history. He probably has the finest football team they've had in recent history. And this is the year. When you look at their schedule, after this, they've got Virginia Tech, East Carolina, Boston College, Penn State, Cincinnati, Rutgers, Syracuse. A lot of those games are at home. This game was pivotal for him. He knew it. They're going to win it, and they're going to be awfully tough to beat the rest of the way. Kervin Richards tries to turn the corner, but Chris Herring will have none of it. They'll have a flag on the play. It looks like a possibly a face mask penalty and you see the faithful from Morgantown what a crowd of West Virginia fans to come up here for this game it's an annual affair for them as you look at the pit sideline not much happiness there that's a young club they're a young team they can rebound uh, Mike Godfrey said that they got a big game next week they go to Boston to play the BC Eagles so uh, they're a team and we'll be there to see them and you can bet that they're going to be back they've got just too much talent the difference here today is that West Virginia's experience, Pittsburgh, is in the middle. They've got good players, and they've got, they don't have the experience of this West Virginia team. As we look at scores in the fourth quarter, Virginia coming back against Duke. First and ten for Pittsburgh after the penalty. It's a face mask. Wonky, hands off, first man through. That's Redmond. Redmond going up over the 40-yard line, and he's brought down at about the 39 of West Virginia. So... Mike Gottfried is content to keep it on the ground here. Rutgers leading Penn State, still in the third at University Park. 
There's a big one. Clemson over Georgia Tech. That's close in the third period. Both lost heartbreakers last week. Michigan trying to rebound from two losses, playing Wake Forest. And they're up 14-3 at Michigan Stadium. At Army, Northwestern leads in the, at halftime, 7-3 over the Black Knights playing that wishbone. And Syracuse coming back after an off week, shutting out Virginia Tech. Here's Wonky to throw. Wonky looking upstairs as a man step for step. Looks like Boyer, and it is intercepted by Alvoid Mays at the one-yard line. His second interception of the day, his third in two weeks. Wonky was trying to hit Baron Jackson, that freshman speedster from Baton Rouge, and he just had great position all the way from Mays, number three. That's his third interception in two weeks. This is a beautifully thrown pass. It's just well covered by Mays, who's got position on 19. Jackson comes down with the football. Excellent job. Let's watch him again. Look at that. Right into his belly, and he was there with great coverage on a very, very quick receiver. As you saw, his second interception of the day. Major Harris out there. He's got West Virginia 99 yards away from the end zone, and they're just going to play it conservatively. Aaron Evans gets the call, and he gets up over the five-yard line out of about to about the six. 136 clock moving as you see the Richmond, Virginia junior get in there, come back into the huddle. West Virginia getting their touchdowns from Rembert, a 31-yard touchdown pass from Harris in the first quarter. Charlie Bauman added a field goal to make it 10 to nothing to end the first quarter of play. Second down and five. Harris hands off to the tailback, and that's going to be uh, Napoleon. Yeah. He's going to surge ahead of the nine-yard line. We knew we'd see Napoleon. He's an outstanding back. The trouble is he's got Andre Johnson and A.B. Brown in front of him. But uh, Troy Washington on the stop. Eugene Napoleon and look at this score in the third quarter Rutgers up now 21 10 in the third period. Third down and about a foot. Pitt got their offense on the board as Henry Tootin hauled in a 22 yard pass from Dickerson and West Virginia scored again in the third 64 yard run by A.B. Brown as you see Napoleon again trying to get that first down and he's going to be stopped short of it at the 10 yard line with 29 seconds left to go. The clock is still going. Pitt has two timeouts remaining but they're not making any attempt to call one. Big big win for the West Virginia Mountaineers and especially to win it right here. This is the last time they won in this series was here at Pitt Stadium. As you see the clock wind down Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions executive producers Jimmy Rayburn Peter Lasser produced today's game. Our director today, Billy McCoy. As the clock winds down and the fans head to the exits, our associate producer, Wendy Fisher, network coordinators, Tony Johnson and Dana Lambert. Jeff Jeffries has been our technical director today. And, of course, the rest of a very fine crew as Don Nealon heads to the sidelines. He talks right there with John Fox, who is a defensive coordinator for Pittsburgh. And he heads into the tunnel. Mike Gottfried, a disappointing loss for the Pittsburgh club as Nealon heads to the tunnel, but they're a young team. Nealon waving to the fans as he heads underneath. A great day for West Virginia as they defeat Pittsburgh by a score of 31 to 10. Next week at high noon, it's Pittsburgh and Boston College from Alumni Stadium in Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts. We hope you'll join us on most of these stations at 12 noon. Our score today is West Virginia beating Pittsburgh by a score of 31 to 10. You've been watching Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions exclusive coverage of great American independent football. Our thanks to Stan Saverin for Bob Cassiola and our